Commissioner uh, Raymond uh, Phillip is uh, in Prime Dev. Perfect. How are we, um, are we waiting on some commissioners to get in Prime Gov still, or how are we looking? Yes, um, I think David Remy and I'm showing uh, six or six board members are present. Uh, I have uh, ones in Prime Gov are Linda Schultz, uh, Mary Jo Meacham, Hasi Poor, Ann Zachritz, and Klaus Freeman Phillip. And I just logged in right now as well to Prime Gov. This is Vahid Farzana. I think I'm in. Yes. You're not, yeah, you haven't shown up yet in Prime Gov, but uh, it's, it's slow. David, this is Katie. Are you um, having any issues getting logged into PrimeGov? We see you in Zoom, but I don't see you in PrimeGov yet. This is Katie. Uh, we do have a quorum in both PrimeGov and Zoom. We perhaps could go ahead and get started with the opening pieces of the meeting. And then if we don't have everyone logged all the way into PrimeGov, by the time we get to actually needing to vote on something, we could pause since it is 201 now. That sounds good to me. Should I go ahead and proceed or? Yeah, um, Mark, does that mess you up on the roll call? No, ma'am. Okay, yep, Klaus, if you'd like to go ahead, uh, we're ready to start. All right, sounds good. Uh, welcome to the April uh, Historic Preservation Commission meeting. Uh, my name is Klaus Ryman Phillip. Uh, I'm the vice chair and I will be filling in as chair for this meeting. As you may be aware, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, no physical location will be provided for the Historic Preservation Commission meeting. This meeting will instead be live streamed from remote locations. As a reminder, we uh, muted everyone's mics except for the commission members. We request everyone joining us today, please keep their mic or phone muted until you are called upon to speak. This helps minimize distractions and ensures everyone can be heard. Uh, as instructed in the agenda, those who called or emailed in advance will let us know their name, contact number, and agenda item they would wish to discuss and will be recognized first. Before the commission votes on each item, I will ask for any members of the public wish to speak. Anyone speaking will be given three minutes to relay information. Since you are muted, when I call on you, please unmute yourself. On a phone, you will press star six. State your name and address for the record on a desktop desktop or laptop, you will hover, hover your cursor over the microphone icon and remove the diagonal red line. Um, if you wish to speak and have not contacted staff in advance of the meeting, you will need to click the raise hand icon on the computer in Zoom or press star nine on the phone. Staff will unmute you and you will then press star six to unmute yourself to speak. If we lose connection for this meeting, the meeting will be stopped and reconvened once the connection is restored, communications are unable to be restored within 30 minutes. Any remaining items will be continued to the next uh, regularly scheduled Historic Preservation Commission meeting on Wednesday, May 5th at 2 p.m. The agenda and documents are located at uh, HTTPS, HTTPS, semicolon, uh, backslash, 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 okc.primegov.com slash public portal slash portal. Please select agenda on the right side of the Historic Preservation Commission meeting to see all items to be discussed. 
Written comments received more than 24 hours before the meeting are posted online and were shared with commission members. No new materials can be shared during today's meeting. Uh, Mark, will you please call the roll. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Fudge. Commissioner Raymond Phillip. Uh, present. Commissioner Farzane. Present. Commissioner Meacham. Well, I know she's here because I saw her logged in. Should I go ahead and count her present? John Milner. Commissioner Poor. Present. Commissioner Remy. I know Commissioner Remy was present uh, on Zoom. Uh, Commissioner Schultz. And she was also present. Commissioner Zach Ritz. Present. We have a quorum. All right, thank you, Mark. Uh, procedures for today's meeting are noted in the agenda. For the sake of time, I will ask participants to refer to this section if they are unfamiliar with the process. Regarding certificates of appropriateness, when the application is approved and after a 10-day protest period has expired, the historic preservation officer will mail the certificate of appropriateness to the applicant. CD construction permits cannot be issued until the CA is issued. Please contact HP staff for final design review inspection or to withdraw items that will not be completed. And regarding appeal to Board of Adjustments, any person aggrieved by any decision granting or denying a CA may appeal to the Oklahoma City Board of Adjustments. All appeals shall be made within 10 days of the commission decision by filing a written notice of appeal with the clerk of the Board of Adjustments. Uh, Katie, any news from the Office of the Historic Preservation Officer? Um, I was, uh, this is Katie. I was just going to make a comment because we have uh, several um, written comments that have come in on a couple of cases this month, more than we typically do. So I just wanted to clarify for the commission and for the general public that's listening. Um, we do have a policy since these meetings are being held virtually and there is no in-person location that everything that is shared with the commission uh, sent to them via email or uh, via the website has to be publicly available. And we have to get all of those things up on the website 24 hours prior to the meeting. So letters that we received within that window of time were added to the website as attachments to the agenda items and were distributed to the commission and to the applicants uh, for which it was applicable. If a letter comes in after that point, um, we can't add it to the meeting, uh, but we do, um, keep those, we put them in the meeting, in the file for the case, and we will try to reference those just verbally in the meeting to let the commission know that a, a comment was received. So I just wanted to clarify how we handle all of those comments that come in um, with this virtual meeting process. And then I was just going to check with Rita, do we need to do another round of roll call for those folks that we can see in Zoom right now, but that did not respond? Yes, because we'll need to have a visual quorum. And so if you would, please, that would be great. Okay, so if you are, um, uh, first, if any, every um, commission member, if you could please turn your um, video on so that we can see you. Um, and uh, uh, then uh, unmute yourself. Um, and I don't know if, Francis, if you need to unmute people, um, I, I can you hear me? Can you yes. hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, um, I was. Dan, I'm, I'm present, and I was, I was unmuted, but then I think he unmuted me too, so I'm good. Okay. Um, so we missed Ann. Ann is present. I'm present. Um, we missed Linda. Linda, if you're able to unmute yourself and uh, present. And uh, David, Remy.
and commissioners will need to remain visible throughout the meeting. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Chairman. I yes. just wanted to confirm that I'm showing that uh, the only two members that are absent are Commissioner Fudge and uh, Commissioner Milner. Correct, although did we get a response from David Remy? Uh, I'm not sure that we got affirmative that he is present. I did not get a, ver oh. Um, he, so David has contacted us to say that it's so choppy he can't hear anything. He's going to try to fix his connection. So I think we can proceed assuming he's not here right now. And then we'll, um, we'll just make note of it in the minutes uh, when he does um, connect to the meeting. Thank you. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you all. Um, so moving on uh, to the acceptance of the meeting uh, minutes from the previous meeting, um, have commissioners had a chance to review the minutes from the March meeting? And if so, uh, or if there are no comments, do we have a motion to accept or modify? I would make a motion to accept the March meeting minutes. I'll uh, second. Moved by Mary Jo, uh, seconded by Ann Zagritz. Please vote. This might be slow today. Uh, Katie, I'm not getting the, uh, the voting buttons today. We probably need to do a roll call. Let me, I gotta raise this up again, that's too small. Mm -hmm. I've got the voting box, but it just says waiting. So just FYI. Okay. I'm here. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh -huh. I need to get a who moved and who seconded on the uh, March 3rd meeting again, please. On the, uh, do you want to do a, I'm sorry, so do you want to get a verbal vote or? Yes, yeah, so we're going to have to do a verbal vote. Okay, perfect. And just for clarification, will we be doing verbal votes for the remainder of the meeting or are we going to try to get back to the uh, digital? We are going to try and, and see if if it works on the other items. Okay, perfect. So uh, going back to the acceptance of the minutes, um, uh, Mary Jo had made a motion and Ann Zacharyts had seconded. Uh, so 
Uh, I guess let's go around and vote. Mark, do you want to call out the commissioner? Commissioner? Yes, yeah, so that, that was just for the March 3rd. Correct, March 3rd, uh, Historic Preservation Commission. All right. Uh, Commissioner Fudge. Commissioner Raymond Phillips. Uh, yes, I. Commissioner uh, Farzane. Commissioner Meacham. Yes. Commissioner Milner. Commissioner Poor. Yes. Commissioner Remy. Commissioner Schultz. Abstain. Commissioner Zach Ritz. Yes. Minutes are approved for March the 3rd. All right. Thank you, Mark. And uh, moving on to uh, item four. Uh, Katie, is there uh, anything from code enforcement? Um, nothing. Well, did we vote? I'm sorry, did we vote on the February 22nd meeting minutes? You might recall oh, that we I, did not um, take action on those at the March meeting because it was such a short turnaround from that special meeting in February. So we yeah, need to go ahead and vote I on did those not, minutes uh, as well. catch that. So let's, um, so the commissioners had a chance to look at the minutes from the Febru uh, February 22nd, 2021 meeting. I would make a motion to accept the meeting, the, the minutes from the February 2nd meeting. <laughs> All right, motion made by Mary Jo. Commissioner Poor will second. All right, Commissioner second from Four. Commissioner Poor. Four. Four. And uh, Four. I guess, uh, Mark, are we going to do another verbal vote on this one? Just a second, it's spinning. Okay. okay. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm calling for movers again. This, this is gonna work now. There's Mary Jo. And Casey Poor seconded it, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna open the vote. <clears throat> There's an answer. Uh, Commissioner uh, Raymond Phillips, uh, are you abstaining? I am. I was not present at that meeting, so I'm right. abstaining from that. Yes. So. Is uh, Commissioner Frazane, are, are you voting? Um, I'm abstaining. I was not present either. Okay. Um, Joe Miller. He's not here. Take the vote. That accounts for all the votes in the club. All right. Looks like that motion passes. Uh, thank you, Mark, for getting the uh, voting figured out. All right. So, Katie, um, anything from code enforcement? Um, nothing of any particular interest to report. Just as always, you can review the code enforcement reports that are provided as part of the packet. Um, and they, um, uh, if you have questions about any of those items, feel free to contact staff or reach out to the city's action center. All right. Thank you, Katie. And uh, continuance announcements and requests, item five. I believe we have one uncontested uh, request. Yes, we have one application that has requested a continuance to uh, May, the May 5th meeting. Um, they just uh, were continued previously and have not had time to get the revised documentation submitted to staff. Um, if that uh, applicant is present as an attendee, um, 
if they could ask to unmute themselves, we could unmute and um, let them comment on this. We, if possible, would like to confirm that they will be able to submit all their materials by Tuesday of next week to make that May 5th meeting deadline. All right, thank you, Katie. And is that applicant present? Doesn't seem like it. I, I do not see that applicant in our um, list of attendees on Zoom. So um, they, they have requested that date. They have already been working with staff to submit some materials. So I think we could safely continue it to that date and then we'll just have to continue to work with them if, if they can't get everything turned in in time. Okay, and that was the May, uh, what was that date? It's the May 5th commission meeting. May 5th, okay, perfect. So do we have a uh, motion to continue uh, HBCA 200181. Make a motion to continue a uh, said item to the May 5th meeting. All right, thank you. Motion by Mary Jo. Do we have a second? I'll second. Was that Ann? It was Ann. Okay, thank you. Second by Ann uh, Zacharitz, and please vote. All right, that item passes. That item is uh, continued and we do not have any new requests, it seems like. Um, we are on to Katie, uh, public hearings. We have no dilapidated structures this month and no national register nominations to review. We have three items on the consent docket. Uh, we did not get any comments on any of these items from the public. Um, the commission can always ask that something be pulled for discussion or ask questions of staff, but we've recommended approval for all of these uh, with no, no concerns. Um, so they are on the consent docket. All right, thank you, Katie. Uh, commissioners, have you had a chance to review these three items and do uh, you have any comments on those? All right, sounds like nothing from commissioners. Uh, is there anyone, uh, any applicants or anyone from the public who would like to comment on these three items? Right. Sounds like there's nothing. So do we have a motion to approve the consent docket? I'll move to approve the consent docket. All right, thank you. That was uh, Ann again, I believe. Correct. Okay, thank you. Moved by Ann Zachritz. Do we have a second? Commissioner Poor will second. All right, thank you, Commissioner Poor. And just for the record, I'm still waiting on this to load. So let's see. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm having issues with the uh, consent docket item. Okay, should we just uh, return to a verbal vote on this one or should we try to, do you want to try to get this to work? Let's do a, a verbal, if you don't mind. Let me try one, th one other thing. Okay, and that was approved. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll try it one more. Oh. We'll try it one more time here. I've got the move button, so I don't know if the other commissioners have that as well, but move by Ann. Zacharitz, and then Cassie Poor. perfect. All right, and that item passes. So if you um, were an applicant or 
member of the public who was involved with either one of these projects, um, you're welcome to hang around, but uh, your items are approved. All right, moving on to cases for individual consideration. Uh, we have 11 cases this month, um, starting with HPCA 210007 at 1703 North Hudson Avenue. This is located in Heritage Hills, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application by Jeff Blake, Gummerson Blake, for Fred and Carter Fellers for certificate of appropriateness to one, raise yard 30 to 36 inches elective, two, expand driveway concrete to back of house elective, three, install driveway gate and iron fencing elective, four, install wood fencing and brick fence wall elective, five, construct fence and retaining walls elective, six, construct pool elective, seven, install mechanical equipment elective, eight, construct raised brick patio elective, and nine, remove east driveway elective. Um, this is a case that the commission uh, reviewed previously. And the applicant has made some revisions based on feedback provided by the commission at the last meeting, as well as a discussion with the neighborhood association. The changes include pushing the fence, um, fence and retaining wall back to be flush with the front porch instead of projecting forward at that point as well as pushing the uh, proposed swimming pool back and reducing it in size. Other changes include uh, changing a portion of the fencing on the west side of the property to a brick fence wall. Um, and uh, I think the applicant's representative is on the Zoom call and can speak to any other questions the commission may have about the project. Um, staff has still recommended a continuance of this application because there are still a number of things that don't meet the commission's guidelines, including the, the location of the, the pool and the fence and retaining wall. Um, some of the fencing that's proposed also exceeds the height allowances within the guidelines. Uh, you do have comments in your uh, packet that are available in PrimeGov uh, from the neighborhood association and from several other neighbors in addition to that. All right, thank you, Katie. And I'll just see, is the applicant present? Yes, I'm here. Okay, perfect. We will um, allow commissioners to comment and then we will circle back to you to respond to any comments from commissioners. And is there anyone from the public who'd like to comment on this case as well? We do have several people that I believe have joined the call that had indicated they'd like to speak on this item. Okay, perfect, then we will uh, circle back to them as well. And uh, any comments from commissioners? So yeah, this is a case uh, that I was not present for um, initially, but it seems like the applicant made some um, modifications possibly based on some uh, some feedback from the discussion at the last meeting. Um, but again, I was not present at that last meeting, so I'm not sure exactly what that uh, conversation um, evolved around. Uh, but perhaps the applicant can speak to the changes they made and their, um, you know, their justification for uh, the way the site is laid out. I can, I would like to- oh, Go ahead, yes. Can I make a comment first, please? Yeah, we can hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we'll allow um, Mary Jo to, uh, to make some comments on it, and then we'll circle back to you. Was this uh, Jeff Blake that was speaking? or No, this is actually the homeowner, uh, Fred oh. Bellers. Okay, perfect. All right. Appreciate you. Thanks for joining the call. And um, uh, we'll hear what um, Mary Jo has to say, and then we can circle back to you to respond to any comments. I I don't want to speak directly to um, the or go over the 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 project itself, I just want to uh, acknowledge that, um, in my opinion, unique circumstances is kind of the um, point that we need to be applying to this project. And that if we allow anything that is, um, that is an exception to the guidelines, that uh, in the guidelines, it, it specifically speaks to unique circumstances saying, and I just want to read this briefly because I think that this is how we can make the decisions on what we can either do or not do. 
It's acknowledged that some applications to the Preservation Commission will require approval of work that does not strictly comply with the standards set forth in the, in the guidelines or which is not addressed by the guidelines, but which is nevertheless historically appropriate and in compliance with the intent of the guidelines and the Secretary of Interior Standards. In such circumstances, and I believe this is one, that the Historic Preservation Commission may approve a CA for such work upon, and I think this is the important part as a commissioner to understand and to uh, regard when you make a motion for this project, is to, uh, for such work to issue a detailed finding that the proposed work is historically appropriate and is consistent with the spirit and the intent of the preservation standards and guidelines and that the proposed work not adversely affect the historic character of the property or the integrity of the historic district. So with that in mind, I would just say that I personally, I think that it's, it's going to be difficult to respond to so many exceptions to the guidelines and find unique circumstances. So if there are commissioners that are that have those unique circumstances or if the applicant has developed the unique circumstance that would allow for so many guidelines to be uh, made an exception, then I, I would say go forward. I'm very interested in hearing, hearing that. Okay, thank you, Mary Jo. And are there any other commissioners who have um, looked this over and have any specific questions or comments to make. I just want to say that was very helpful, Mary Jo. Um, and I, I think that it would be the right opportunity right now to let the applicant kind of make their case on unique circumstances. Okay, sure. we'll yeah. give this a run. Uh, this is Jeff. Um, so I, I think we've provided several examples we'll go through uh, corner lots, most corner lots in Heritage Hills are opposed with the unique circumstance of a very limited, sometimes small or no backyards. And this what that's what this homeowner is faced with, just a unique condition uh, where they have two frontages that are, that are very much, you know, choking in on the overall property. And the way this was originally designed, there's just not much backyard. And so we pull back the fence line uh, several feet to go flush with the iron railing that's, that's there, uh, matching brick, uh, keeping the wall low, um, keeping the fence transparent. And so it's not a real heavy structure. Um, and we're you know very much trying to do that in keeping with the architecture that's there now. Um, we understand that there are some guidelines that in conflict um, because you you know in any other world if we were black and white on the guidelines the fence would be 10 to, uh, six to ten feet behind that corner that we see in the picture and um it's virtually no backyard for this homeowner so um we just want you all to look at this with fresh eyes we want you to look at what we've deemed with other cas uh, the except you know some very fringy other uh, properties that you've uh, allowed this type of layout to be performed on. And, um, you know, some concessions we made, we made the pool smaller, we moved it further back and over. Um, we moved the wall, the wall and the fence back flush with the fence that's there now, uh, excuse me, the railing that's there now. We eliminated the, the driveway and the approach as needed um, to clean up and to bring more grass into the into the picture and uh, just to eliminate that parking spot. Um, and you said the fence is over the limit, but it can't be more than 10 inches. We were trying to adhere to an all in plus or minus six foot tall fence. So some four foot wood fence with some two foot plus brick and some uh, iron railing that's four plus feet with again, two to less than two foot uh, brick um, footing or wall below it. Um, so we feel like with comparable examples on corner lots, uh, we're seeing walls that were accepted way in excess of, of what we're proposing. Uh, so with that said, maybe we can look at the examples, look at what we've put in front of everyone today and, and, and see what everyone thinks. Sure, and um, actually, uh, Katie, um, 
would now be a good time to hear comments from uh, from the public, or should we? Um, what do you think? Um, sure, we could see if there's any um, one uh, present that wants to speak on it at this um, point, and then let the um, commission continue the the discussion of the proposal. Um, I think I I was wrong when I said several people. I think we just had um, the uh, the applicant and the property owner, and then I know we have. Uh, Randy Ice with the Neighborhood Association. I don't know if he had any um, comments he wanted to make or if anyone else has called in to speak on this item. I Good think Katie. the others were all submitted in writing. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, do we have any uh, commissioners? Uh, Randy, are you there? Andy? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, we submitted a written comment and we would encourage you to read that. That was a it was a difficult case. Uh, that was a, a, a comment that was reached upon in a consensus with our committee. And basically what we're encouraging is the commission to make a decision on the unique circumstances as Mary Jo has uh, indicated, uh, because that seems to be the, the, the nexus of this decision. And we don't think it's fair to continually um, uh, co co continue this just over and over and have the homeowner spend more and more money on architectural fees if the commission is going to eventually say uh, this is impossible. And so that was our only real concern was we don't want to put the homeowner through any more expense. Uh, and uh, they already did what, what we had asked. But the question is, is this sufficient to pass the commission's uh, uh, unique circumstances criteria? All right. Well, I appreciate that, Randy. Um, yeah, it looks, you know, to me, um, it is a difficult case looking at the, the site plan and, and the images of the house. Uh, it almost looks like the side yard is longer than the, uh, you know, the technically the front yard set back off 16th. It's very generous. And uh, I, I definitely see, you know, to me, that unique circumstance of having very limited space um, behind the house does seem justified and I'm not sure how much smaller you could make that um, seems like they've responded um, as best they can and address concerns the neighborhood have, uh, has I suppose also you know de um, removing that drive is uh, I think a positive kind of a net positive for this proposal so you know personally I don't have uh, any major concerns and I think that they've done what they can to kind of mitigate the impact. And uh, uh, I think there is a unique circumstance personally, but I'll turn it back over to my fellow commissioners and see if anyone has any other comments or questions or. Concerns. So this is Commissioner Poor, I think where I struggle is I see this more as a side yard and not the backyard with the, the, the address is um, based off of Hudson. And that's to me, the primary door, even though it does seem mm -hmm. like that there are two front doors really on this home. Um, so I struggle a little bit with calling it the backyard in the first place. Um, and the fact that, you know, the, the guidelines require there to be a setback from the front facade um, for a fence, you know, that is not, this design is not meeting that. Um, so I'm struggling in that aspect of this really not being the backyard. This is the side yard and it, the fence should be pushed behind that primary facade where the front door is on Hudson. Well, and I would add that uh, going back to unique circumstances, I, I understand uh, having a small backyard can be a circumstance that prevents you from putting a pool in, but I don't think that, um, having a small backyard is unique because there's a lot of small backyards. But when you look at the list of all of the guidelines that would have to have a unique circumstance in order to approve, I don't know how you would get there. If you, I mean, I have a list of seven. I mean, and, and one is the Portica share, which I'm 50, 50 on that, but that's still, you know, it doesn't really follow our guidelines. The uh, topography, how do we do a unique circumstance? The unique circumstance for that is not a small backyard, it's a pool. So we're not, in my opinion, we're not getting there on topography if we say the unique circumstances, we have to have that for the pool and we have to have the pool because there, because we have a, a, a small backyard. 
the construction of the pool is specifically addressed in the guidelines. It must is supposed to be in the backyard. We have made exceptions, but the exceptions that I uh, remember and have reviewed had maybe one or two exceptions to get it in that situation, not this many. The fence forward of the 40% or the transparency or its location, it's still, it's still not, uh, doesn't follow the guidelines. It, should, it still needs to be six feet back from the house, specifically noted in the guidelines, not the porch, but the house. Specifically in the guidelines, it says no new retaining walls will be installed unless there is evidence of historic retaining walls. Okay, the only reason unique circumstance for that, again, is we're back to the pool is the reason. Uh, the six foot fence, I, I cannot understand why the fence, I mean, that's just a given. We have gone round and round over wood fences and two or three inches and gates and all sorts of stuff telling people, unless it goes up to somebody else's fence, that's generally the exception we use for a taller fence, that it doesn't match an existing fence. Even if that fence is not a historic fence or a historic fence, but we want to preserve the continuity and we don't want something, you know, something that looks weird. So, but I mean, when you're building a new fence and you have the opportunity to stay at six feet and this one on the, would be, I have to get my directions right, on the east side where the trellis is and all of that, or when it turns the corner, I guess, on the other street, by the time you get the, the fence, the proposed, the wood fence on top of the retaining wall, we're at over seven feet. So, I mean, we're, and then on the, even on the west, um, the new wall, the new, whatever kind of wall it is, the, the, uh, the wrought iron wall that's over by the Portica share, e even the drawings clearly indicate the height of that wall is still over six feet. I mean, they have the little decorative items going over the six feet. The little ball on top of the column is over six feet. And staff had questions as to what actually the rest of the columns would look like. And then the same with the trellis. So I don't see, I mean, you can say that the pool, I can understand the unique circumstance. It's a small backyard. Can we put it someplace else? I can understand that. And we have several. But after that, every guideline that we have to make an exception for is only for the pool. So I don't know how you would make, personally, I don't know how I would make a motion that would say my unique circumstance for all of these, all of these guidelines, what, what would it be? I would have to say the reason that we're breaking the, that we're giving, making an exception is for the, for a pool. And I, I, I don't see that when you go back to unique circumstances, how that is one of two things. It's either historically appropriate or uh, it's, uh, you know, or, or it, it, it's consistent with the spirit of the guidelines. I don't see how putting pools, fences, going through all of breaking all of these guidelines is in the spirit of, of the preservation uh, guidelines that we have. It's just too far. I'm not against the pool in a, in a, if you had, because we just did one this year. But it was so, uh, there wasn't any, they, they, they followed all of the rest of the guidelines except for the pool went into the side yard because the backyard wasn't big enough. So I just don't see how we can get there. And I'm, I'm like Randy, I, I wanna, it seems unfair to give people false hope that we can uh, somehow mitigate such, a, such a, 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 a design like this. I mean, it's, I don't wanna, it's not a bad design. It's a great design. It looks, it's very attractive and all of that. I'm not against any of that, but I just don't see how it follows the guidelines. Well, I appreciate that. And I think you are, um... You bring up a great point. There are a lot of items on this. I think some of them are related, not related. I mean, the you know the fence on the port of Cochere and all that is is uh, almost a separate item in some ways. I agree. I mean, I think there are a lot of things um, that don't meet the guidelines. Uh, you know, maybe they could be made to fit the guidelines, but there are some fundamental questions on whether um, yeah, those kind of configuration. You know, if there are enough. Uh, justifications to allow for that. Do any other commissioners have any comments or should I turn it back over to the um, uh, to the applicant to respond? Uh, this is Commissioner Zacherts. I'd just like to comment. Uh, I agree with Commissioner Meacham's comments in every regard. 
I assume this backyard was this size and configuration when the homeowners purchased it. Um, the fact that they now desire to put in a pool and have all these other criteria that need to be met as unique circumstances to me doesn't warrant exceeding the guidelines on so many different items. Okay, thank you. And any other commissioners who have comments on this or I'll turn it back over to the uh, applicant to respond to some of those concerns. All right, uh, Jeff Blake or Eric or either one of you. Yeah, so sorry, this is Fred Fellers again. This is the homeowner. Oh, uh -huh. And so I, you know, I think, excuse me, I think Jeff did a fantastic job with the design, trying to capture sort of the spirit of the architecture in the neighborhood. We've, we've tried to work hand in hand with, with the neighborhood. What, what I'm hearing though, from the board uh, is that there are you know, multiple guidelines that you know, you believe this is, uh, you know, we're, we're outside of the scope of what the guidelines allow. That, that's a little bit news to me. So I, I guess I need to have a, a, a better understanding of what specifically. My, my understanding was that, you know, in, in being in attendance, although not speaking uh, at the February 2nd commission meeting, you know, the conversation was around the, the, uh, the east side. So where the gate kind of, or I'm sorry, where the fence line would protrude beyond the uh, front railing of the porch in the front yard. And so there was a lot of, a lot of discussion around that specific guideline and, you know, eyes wide open. We, we knew that that was, that, that was, that was a major request on our part. Um, and so, you know, hearing the feedback both by the commission and from the neighborhood, we, we, we brought it back in line with the front porch. Now I'll, I'll caveat that by saying, you know, I realize that this is, you know, we're asking for something that the guidelines don't allow for. And, and we are asking for this as a unique uh, circumstance and situation. It, it, it's not a matter of having a small backyard. We, we literally have no backyard. Our backyard is a driveway and a fence that goes to the neighbors. There, there is no backyard for this property whatsoever. And if we were to go with the guidelines and do a six foot setback from the property corner, you know, you can look at our site plan and see that that would give us maybe a six foot strip of grass, um, you know, on the Hudson side of our garage as it goes to our, our neighbor uh, uh, neighboring property line to the north. So, you know, what we're asking is for, you know, some accommodation in the guideline because this is a unique circumstance. There is no backyard. Um, for historical precedent, you know, a couple of things. And, you know, I think one of the commissioners hit the nail on the head. There's, there's, there's several kind of discrete requests in here. And I don't want to, I don't want to focus on a pool. Um, you know, that, that's, that's not even our intent. That's not our primary intent. What we are trying to do is capture a yard. And that's really, that was the reason why we almost did not purchase this house seven years ago was because of the lack of yard. This home, the original blueprints had the front actually oriented to 16th. So what we're showing as a side yard, you know, that was actually designed as the original backyard. The, the driveway that we're demolishing that goes out to Hudson on the east, that was actually added in the 70s. That was not original. There's, there's a lot of things about this request that actually take this home back to more of a historically accurate representation. Now, again, the pool aside, you know, our, our hope was, you know, if we could have our druthers and get a fenced in yard, we, we'd love to have a pool. If we need, I mean, we can put an X on that pool right now and completely throw it out. I don't, we don't even care about the pool. What, what we care about is having a, a fenced in backyard. We have two young children. We have a brand new puppy. I mean, if you were, if you were driving by my yard last night at four in the morning, you would have seen me sitting in that, that side yard uh, with with a puppy trying to potty train because, you know, open to the street because we don't have 
any privacy or any enclosure for our children or, or our pet. I think what we're asking here would be an improvement for the property. I think it would improve property value for the neighborhood. I think everything in the design elements are consistent with HP and, and you know, it, it ha have taken uh, the guidance that everyone provided both from the commission and the neighborhood re review board, board um, to heart and have tried to incorporate that into this. Um, you know, again, it, you know, we keep, it, I'd love to go through each and every guideline that were, because, because in my opinion, honestly, the only thing that I was really aware of was this, this setback issue. If we need to drop height on some fences, fine. You know, the, the West property, the, um, the Port Cashier, all we're asking to do is enclose a portion. How do you do that? Well, we've got a gate that goes, you know, in front of the Port Cashier. That's all that is, is it's a simple gate that goes right in front of it that, uh, that is, um, uh, adheres to setbacks. Okay, so if the problem is we've got decorative iron, you know, balls that are over the, I mean, come on. Okay, we, we can obviously drop that. I mean, we're, we're trying to make the design elements consistent with the house. We can make it wood or what, I mean, what, whatever you'd like us to show as far as materials um, and height, sure, give us an opportunity to do that, but we, we'd like to enclose the backyard. The, the other, uh, you know, there's a, there's a fence enclosure on the Northwest corner this stuff has nothing to do with the pool. It has everything to do with, with trying to create a yard. Um, so I would just say, you know, like, let's look at the elements that we're doing here. Um, you know, maybe on uh, each one has, as they are warranted in and of themselves and see if we can't, uh, you know, come to some kind of uh, an agreement. I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, if, if that is the case, then I think the easiest route would be to uh, go back to staff and sit down and discuss uh, types of fencing that would be appropriate uh, because that, that I don't think is, is, a, is a problem. I think it's the, and, and actually the, the way that it was, um, well, I mean like the retaining wall I mean, if you were just putting a, a see-through fence in the yard, I think that we always give exceptions based on location and complications based on where the house is or, or driveways or whatever. I don't, I don't see that as, um, I, I think all of those could be overcome. And I'm, I wasn't trying to be picky on your over six feet. I'm just saying, if the guidelines clearly state six feet, then it seems simple that, that the to me, that, that, the, that the applicant, not necessarily you or whoever, comes back with a, just so that we don't have to discuss that, it's very clear that all the fencing is less than, is six feet or less. Or sometimes because of topography, you know, we say, or the adjacent fence, we, we make exceptions. But I think if that's what you're uh, willing to go forward with, then I would, I would say go back to staff and discuss the possibilities. Well, that might be a good segue. Um, staff, they have one continuous left, con correct? That's correct. This has been heard once before, um, so the commission can hear it a total of three times before action has to be taken on the case. Of course, um, staff can administratively approve uh, fencing that meets the applicable guidelines. So there's, um, if there are just fencing issues that we, we want to address that's something that that staff could potentially work out with the applicant outside of a commission meeting um, but particularly on that east side where they i think are going to want to be forward of what the guidelines allow that would have to come back to the commission okay so it sounds like uh you know i think it might make sense to do continuous here so you have a chance to work with staff on uh either bringing everything in compliance to where you could just get administrative approval or to be able to get administrative approval on some of the items. And uh, maybe if there's a creative approach to the back or some modifications you wanna make, you can bring those uh, to us again. Um, so is that something that you would be interested in? Uh, either Jeff or Fred, as far as um, seeking continuance to the, uh, uh, either to the May or probably the, um, June meeting, I suppose. 
Philip, a couple, couple of things. Um, we, uh, we had several attachments that we haven't gone through, examples of other properties, uh, maybe even some renderings. Um, I don't know if you intended to go through those or um, those were all submitted for the purpose of kind of reviewing, discussing, showing comparable. I mean, that's the first question. Second question, are you saying administratively this could be approved at the current fence line that we're proposing, which is no, with, no. with the uh, porch? No, that would be something that would have to come back to the commission probably, or it's something that, you know, maybe we vote on to today, but. I think um, if it's things that are in line with the guideline, for example, on the other side with the pork or share, if you change the configuration of that fencing, um, you know, that could be potentially something that staff could approve. Uh, but yeah, I do think there are, it seems like, uh, I think Mary Jo was touching on this. There are a lot of items here that fundamentally seem like, um, you know, it's either something that we could approve or if we don't, I'm not sure. Um, you know, it'd have to be potentially a, I guess, a radically different proposal from what you're showing here, uh, especially as claiming that that yard. So um. this is Katie. Um, to as far as the uh, the other attachments that were submitted, we and the powerpoints only include photos. That's just how we do our powerpoints for the meetings. We don't put drawings and renderings and things in them. But all of the photos that the applicant submitted and the renderings submitted as well as a survey of properties fronting on Hudson in this surrounding area are included in your attachments that are online in PrimeGov. It starts on page, uh, let's see, the renderings start on page um, 11 of the attachments, uh, showing the fence and the pool from several different angles, uh, as well as the, the house, the garage, and then starting on page 18 of your attachments are um, illustrations of our photos and aerial views of houses along Hudson that, that face Hudson and kind of their backyard conditions. And then um, several examples that the applicant also submitted of kind of similar unusual conditions with fencing and um, side yard, backyard situations. So um, Jeff, I don't know if you are online looking at the agenda material, at the application materials, but that's where all of those are. If there's something in particular that you want to direct the commission to. Yeah, I think there's a few worth talking about. And uh, I realize some of these examples may have had CAs in the past and, and some did not. And it's easy to say, we'll throw those out. Uh, specifically though, right down the street, just north and on the other side of the road, uh, the Ainsworth house, I'm going blank on the address, but it's in that attachment. There is a house that faces, I guess I need to pull that up in order to say what that address is. Yikes. Um, the question is how fast can I do that? Is that the house caddy corner to the, uh, to your house pretty much on 16th and Hudson? It is 326 Over. Northwest 18th and it's on page 26 of the attachments. It's a a corner property that's an L shape with kind of an unusual entrance um, centered in the, the corner, the intersection of the L of the house. That's it. So while the, while the entrance is at a 45 degree angle, it's still very much looking at the frontage in a, in a comparable way that Hudson is part of the frontage of that house. There was a CA in 2015 that was approved and when you look at that brick wall, and we have no problem with the six feet, that let's not get hung up on that. But if it, their wall is six feet, it very much protrudes beyond the original structure. And uh, it was a CA that was approved. And so we're not even suggesting we want to take a fence out as, as far as they did beyond their front corner. Um, we see that if you all found that acceptable, that we are not overreaching at all with even the proposal of having a little bit of accent brick you know, below it, uh, with the with the ironwork above it, um, this is this is far from overreaching compared to what was approved on that particular. Property. If you can see those pictures, both top view and you know elevations. Um, I guess I need to go to the other examples. It's yeah, kind no, of I see that. Uh, I see that. I mean, I've got it pulled up on 
Google Street View, but um, that's not the resource. Maybe everyone has, but I see what you are referencing there. About uh, continue on your, you said you had some other examples. Yeah. I'm trying to get this pulled up so I can speak a little bit more intelligently here. Katie, did you have a comment on that particular one? Um, so I, I looked at that one. That one is one that had a CA. We reviewed that fence as a fence in the backyard. It is an unusual configuration, the way the house is laid out, but the address is Northwest 18th Street. Um, so we treated that, that brick fence wall as a backyard fence that's allowed to come out farther into, um, you know, farther toward the street. Looking at it today, in retrospect, with the discussion that we're having now, um, we might have pushed a little harder to say, you know, we need to think about the fact that this house sort of faces both streets, but that's that's why that one was approved. It addressed off of 18th Street. We treated 18th Street like the front and treated that fence um, to the north of the house and the west of the house as a backyard fence. And I think, you know, back to Fred's comments that the entrance uh, very well could have been on 16th originally. You know, you could make the case that Hudson is the side yard, even though the house now clearly has a prominent front door on Hudson. Um, I don't know if that was always the case or if anyone can say anything to that. I'm just now getting this packet downloaded. It's huge. Well, it does sound like, um, uh, maybe I'll turn it back over to my other commissioners, but it still sounds like there's some kind of fundamental uh, issues with this one to work through and either, um, yeah, I'm not sure any of the other, other commissioners want to comment on anything that we've discussed here in the past few minutes. This is Commissioner Schultz. And um, I, I do agree with Commissioner Meacham. Um, I I think I heard that Mr. Fellers wanted to to look at the uh, staff report and 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 really understand uh, kind of in an itemized way, which it which the staff report does do. Um, what would be helpful for him to address? And I, and I think we're trying to be. Um, I mean, I think we're trying to be compassionate. Everybody from the uh, the homeowners uh, who are on the committee uh, to the staff to us to the to to Mr. Feller's efforts and to his um, decision, along with Jeff, of of whether or not they would be they would encourage us to do the continuance as opposed to uh, a possible declination for him to work through some more of these things with the staff because I'm in agreement that there are, there are too many um, variances for me to vote to approve it at, as it is now. I agree that it seems like we're at a point where there are a lot of things, uh, you know, a lot of individual items that we've discussed, a lot of things that um, the applicant may be willing to adjust, uh, especially with staff um, that might bring them into compliance. Um, there, of course, are still some other fundamental issues, but um, I'm not sure that we're going to get to a place where we could have a clear vote up or down today on this item. So honestly, I, I think I might recommend that we vote to continue this item so that the applicant can work with staff on some of the kind of basic guideline items uh, and maybe see if there is a, um, you know, a road to, to something that meets the guidelines. And if not, then, you know, uh, whatever small changes that you've made that might bring elements of this into compliance, you can come back with the items that you feel you might need um, some relief on as it relates to the guidelines. And we will discuss those changes at the next meeting. So I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. So Philip, you know, of course, this this conversation's kind of comparable to our last meeting that formed a continuance. Uh, 
And naturally, of course, the next day I'm calling up Katie and we're talking to staff and we're asking what will fly. We understand a lot of this is not in, in the guidelines. A lot of this is not by the letter of the law and compliance, but in the spirit of the architecture and the spirit of making this look appropriate, what should we do? No one, staff never said, don't do a brick lower wall. That seems to be a problem today, but I'm asking these questions directly. I mean, what you're asking me to do, I have done. And I said, I am an open book. Tell us what we can do. Katie said, I think if you'll line it up with the porch railings, that stands a much better chance. We know it's not compliance. She never said, don't do a lower brick, uh, you know, footing or wall that the railing sits on. No one ever said that that would be a problem. Um, no one said, don't do wood. Uh, no one said, don't make it seven foot. I, I understand it's six foot, but you know, it would have been nothing for me to draw a three foot wood fence on a five foot, on a two foot, uh, brick wall. So I went to staff, everyone has all these drawings, everyone's heard the discussion, we know what the problems are. And I said, look, in the spirit of what we're trying to do, tell me what you think we can submit. And you're seeing that today. Um, no one said don't draw a pool. No one said I, I recognize that the pool is in front of the corner. We recognize it's by all measurements in the front yard. Um, but the takeaway was with the meeting with the neighbors, with the revised drawings sent to staff, absolutely, Joe is right. It does not meet black and white some of the guidelines that we're trying to get through. But does it meet, is it appropriate? Does it look fitting to the area? Is it fitting to the neighborhood? Does it look like it belongs to the house? And I ask everyone to just set the guidelines aside, to look at, look at the renderings, look at the design, look at how it, it plays to the architecture of the house and see if there's any way that uh, this can be fitting to uh, what we're trying to do here. I mean, the, if we went through some of the other examples of what is being considered acceptable via CA uh, on other properties, this is, this is very well in accordance with the spirit and the feel of this neighborhood. And so, I hear the commissioners and I respect very much what you all have to say. And I recognize we are redlining, we are pushing the limits of the guidelines. We are beyond the guidelines. Um, that's, that's all I ask is that you all consider if, if you're walking your dog by this property and we've erected this, this low wall with this iron rail, which is directly across the street, by the way, um, the Hatfields we did with the CA, a fence just like this. No one's saying a thing about that. Topography behind that wall has changed as well. It looks, it's new, it's not original. It looks very appropriate to the architecture of the house. And this is really not any different of an ask. Um, so uh, I understand I, this may sound redundant to what I've asked in the past, but I guess I'm, I'm saying it again because Philip, I, I jumped through the hoop. We mm -hmm. met with staff, we listened to where could the gray area be? What could be considered appropriate looking? And that's this set of drawings. Well, I, I would yeah. like to ask, after you received the staff report, did you feel like that they were direct, I mean, that they were for the project or if they still had concerns? Because that's all we have. We have, you know, we have your proposal, we have what staff thinks and, you know, and I will tell you, I believe, I, I know myself and I, I know the, a lot of the commissioners. I mean, we have, this is a tough case. And I probably personally, I've probably spent four hours maybe on your case, you know, <laughs> trying to do the, the to, to do the right thing. And uh, I just think that um, there's just so many changes and I don't want to say precedent, but it does kind of set precedence when we say, okay, we're willing to, to, uh, we're willing to make exceptions to the guidelines when we have those unique circumstances. But when we have so many, then it just seems like we're being pushed and it's just easier for the next people to come back and say, see, see what those people did. And we just can't, um, we have to look at each project every time and try to hold the line. 
And I think this one is, it's just, it's tough. And the other is we also struggle with this whole idea of, of somebody presenting a project like yours that is well-designed, but that we all know is going to be, have issues and uh, to try to get it passed. And then saying, well, go back and try again. In my opinion, we would be better off being more vocal the first time and saying, there's just too many. I'm not really sure what you can do. And that's kind of what I felt. And, and we struggle with this because we don't want to give people hope and then come back again, like you're saying, well, we did what you told us to do and, or you didn't tell us. It, so it, it's a struggle, uh, Jeff, Mr. Fellers. I don't want you to feel like that um, the commission hasn't um, diligently studied this particular property and then the other problems in the future that we see being pushed and struggling with how many exceptions can we make when people come in. So I, 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 I mean, that, that's where I am on it too. I just wanted to to make sure that you all understand that there's been a struggle, I think, with each individual to try to, to be as fair as we can and uh, look at your project. And I do very much appreciate those words, uh, Joe. I, I get it. Uh, I, I guess, I guess my, my beef is that I see examples of, of taller than six foot fences all over Heritage Hills that have been approved. I see fences sitting on short walls with railings that have been approved. I see side yards, while not the front elevation, that way extend beyond uh, what we would consider aesthetically pleasing right up to the sidewalk, but it's a side yard, so you guys have given grace over it. Uh, and that's in some of the examples we're talking about, particularly this 2203 North Hudson on, the, on page 25. I mean, the, the backyard goes 20 feet beyond the side, all the way up to the sidewalk. And that was a CA approved in 2000, uh, 1999. And so everyone's saying, that's okay. That looks okay in this neighborhood. I, and, and my takeaway, again, set aside the guidelines. If you all think that that project aesthetically and historically and functionally looks okay to the neighborhood, I just can't imagine why you would deny this application. Are you all looking at? I am. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. And, and I mean, you said it was approved in 1999. I mean, HPCA 1283 approved 1999. That's a very long time ago. And, oh, and, and let, me, let me just clarify with that one that in the commission prior to 2002 had very minimal guidelines for everything, basically, um, and, and including fencing. Um, so CAs prior to that 2002 kind of revision of the structure of the commission, the guidelines, the ordinance. Um, it, it's just a very different situation from what was reviewed, what applicants had to submit, and the standards that applications were held to. So I do not believe that that application would be approved if it were to come across uh, the commission's desks today. I, I don't believe so either. Uh, but I, you know, I we still have to look at each one uh, individually and I mean, we just, if we said, I mean, we could apply, we could find 10 things that maybe we could fit into each one of these, but not all together. And the other is we've got 50 years behind us with this HP ordinance, 50 years, 50 plus now. And it's not easier to keep, to keep the guidelines, uh, to, to, to restrict ourselves or try to go by the guidelines now. It is 10 times, 100 times harder. And particularly in this period in Heritage Hills and all of the historic districts where construction is, we've never seen anything like this before. So we have really, uh, I mean, it is really difficult for the commission to try and hold this line with so much new construction, so much demand for changes, so many additions. And, uh, and so, you know, that's kind of the result here. We're just this one, I think, um, for me, I just feel like uh, if it's just fencing, uh, if that is the main thing, I think that there's a lot of there's different directions you could go there, and and it and it could get approved. Well, so just uh, and uh, just for some clarity, then just to provide the applicants some clarity, um, based on the discussion that I'm hearing, it sounds like there's um, probably little support 
to extending the fence forward. Of course, there are a lot of things that you can do. There are a lot of other items in your application that could be approved, possibly even administratively. Um, you know, so in the, in the, I guess, the interest of not leading you down a wrong path again, um, it sounds like there's a pretty clear consensus among the commission uh, that extending that fence forward uh, is something that is not supported, at least in its current configuration. Um, that is, unless anyone else has any other comments on that. So I guess I get back to, I, I don't want to lead you on. I don't want to give you false hope on something, but there are elements that I think, you know, uh, that you could take back to staff to work through, um, you know, to maybe get you 80% or, you know, closer to what you are wanting to do with the property. Um, so I guess I get back to, I don't think we're going to have a clear answer today. I don't know. Uh, I'll defer back to Fred, the homeowner, to 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 take it from here. It's, the only the only last thing I, I wanted to bring up, Philip, and and this was part of the discussion with staff to understand what is this neighborhood doing, how is it changing or not changing and growing. And Katie, you read to me some pretty powerful language that we're not in a time capsule; that we are, in fact, a neighborhood that is growing. While it is historic in nature, and we do want to try to preserve some of this historic fabric, it does have to grow with its homeowners. It does have to evolve. Uh, Katie, do you remember some of that language that is in the guidelines that speaks to that? Because I really feel like the spirit of this fence is what that discussion is all about. So there, uh, it's a section that we don't include in the staff report each time, but section uh, chapter one, and I think it's section 1.9 or 1.10 that does talk about balancing the need for properties to evolve, to you know, accommodate modern amenities, um, modern lifestyles, and that properties change over time, balancing that with historic preservation. Um, but that's like sustainable materials. That's not busting all the guidelines, really, to me. Uh, I mean, I understand that, and I think that the district has evolved admirably to uh, adjust and accommodate uh, modern families um, and still managed with a great deal of pressure to, to preserve the historic uh, integrity as much as it could uh, against all that. And, and that's what the guidelines are to me. And I don't think that they're necessarily something to push or um, challenge. I think there's something to embrace because what, what we're trying to do, what the neighborhood is trying to do is to, to, to be stewards of that whole environment, of that entire uh, uh, saving what, uh, what they treasure. And so those accommodations um, are, are not um, meant to keep the neighborhood from being viable. They're meant to keep the neighborhood um, historical aspect intact as, as much as is reasonable. And I, I think the guidelines are reasonable. Uh, do, they acquire, do they require us to make some accommodations? They do. But I, I don't really see my role as, as disregarding the guidelines. I mean, I think that, I mean, I do understand about how something looks is a wonderful project and it's architecturally uh, exciting, pleasing. But I think all of those things can be done within the guidelines and, and we're, that's kind of where we are, I think, at this point in the conversation. Can we bring this project close enough to the guidelines that it's not, a, that it's not detrimental to the historic fabric of a neighborhood so that the commission can approve it? I, I kind of think that's where I am on it. Yeah, Linda, I, I agree with you in this, you know, I mean, Jeff has already, uh, you know, I think said said his piece um, and appreciate his 
uh, you know, efforts here and, and with, with all of you and with Katie, uh, particularly, I know that he's, he's uh, you know, really done his best to try to, I guess, sort of toe the line, um, knowing that, you know, there's these guidelines in place, we're, we're not trying to buck them. Um, I, I can appreciate the guidelines as, as a homeowner who lives in this neighborhood. That's a big reason why I live in this neighborhood. You know, I, I, right. um, Charleston, South Carolina, and, you know, I, I know a little bit about historic preservation. And, um, you know, I, I love this neighborhood, uh, I have a great sense of pride, and, and we're glad that you can't just come and tear down these, you know, beautiful 100 plus year old homes and just do whatever. I mean, it's, there's a story uh, that is conveyed by the, the architecture and by the, by the structures in this neighborhood. So, but with that, you know, we've talked a little bit about guidelines evolving. And I think more than just evolving, I think that you've got to recognize that certain properties have unique circumstances. I mean, that's just the bottom line here. And that this property in particular does not have a backyard and does not have any enclosure for privacy. And as you drive through this neighborhood, keep an eye and look for a, a property like ours. And there's not many. There's not many that has no enclosure whatsoever and has no privacy. We are absolutely the minority. And, you know, I can tell you that it impacts this property. I, I know because we almost did not buy this property because of that fact. And so the main thing here is, you know, we, we'd like to find a way to enclose the yard. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, working with the commission, um, administrative approvals after going through these twice now sounds like a pleasure. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's see what we can do. We just don't want to, you know, thump you around. <laughs> so, I, I mean, we keep giving it back to you and saying, okay, then we're not going to do this one. Would you, you know, sort of like to, because we just don't, we want this to be, we want you to be as happy as we're going to be. Um, this is Katie. Let me just say that, yes, I think there are several things that we could get administrative approval for here um, as far as enclosing the yard. Um, we did... Uh, communicate to the applicant's representative back uh, mid-March that we had remaining concerns about the fence being taller than what was allowed, being on a brick retaining wall and be, being forward of the front wall of the house, um, the pool being forward of the, the front wall of the house. And um, that was after receiving this version of the drawings. We didn't have any further dialogue after about changes to the drawings after those comments were sent. Um, so we went forward with you know, what you see before you today, but are absolutely happy to continue to work with the homeowner and with their representative on changes to the design um, focused on how to enclose the yard effectively uh, just for their normal use of the property. Um, yeah, well, let, let's go with the continuance. And then just real quick, I, I will say, you know, the, the last thing I want to say about the guidelines, um, I mean, the, the setback from the front of the house for, you know, the, the east side, I mean, that's just something that we're going to have to work through. Um, again, citing kind of the, the unique circumstance, you know, it, it does not make sense for us to, to just fence in our, our garage and, and nothing else. I mean, we, we, we have to capture a little something yep. in the side yard. Um, and, and that's all I'll say. Just a quick comment on this. And actually, you know, the more I look at this and the street view and things like that, I really do, uh, I agree with um, Commissioner Poor's comment initially on uh, it really does. I mean, the, the face of the building really does face Hudson, you know, that. Um, and so I, I understand her and some of the other commissioners' concerns about the fence being even with the porch. But um, just speaking for myself here, uh, you know, as long as that fence is behind the, the front face of that house to some capacity, maybe there's some, some uh, option to capture some extra yard, you know, that maybe, um, but anyway, that's just my personal comment and I don't want anybody to watch. I, but. I agree with you, Klaus. I, I think if, if we were just discussing a see-through fence, then it would be completely different. And if it was a see-through fence that staff approved, except for they wanted the commission uh, to uh, approve the actual setback because it was not, didn't follow the guidelines, I, I think that we would certainly be open to that. 
So I agree with you. Could we? This is Katie. Um, I'm I'm going to recommend if we continue this that it be continued to the June meeting because the turnaround for the May meeting is very short. And once we get to that May meeting, the commission has to either approve or deny the case. Um, so hopefully in the interim, we could get at least a portion of this administratively approved. And then anything that we just can't get there um, for an administrative approval could come back uh, if the applicant is amenable to that and if the commission's moving in that direction. Let me just try one quick ask. And I, I know it's probably no, but could the commission agree on a one foot setback from corner brick corner of property knowing that administratively will comply with the fence height and materials uh, going forward that's really the only thing in contention here is it not you're the saying like a one foot from like the the face of the house back yeah. like so yeah. it's a physical i mean that's kind of what i was getting at you know if there is some you know if the fence is clearly back a little bit from the face of the house to where the house is kind of proud of that. So it still has kind of that, um, the character of the front. But um, I do, I mean, I do see that you are in a, in a it is a unique house situation um, a little bit. So yeah. It's more than just can, you guys, yeah. can you guys hear me? Sorry, I'm, this is Commissioner Ramey. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, sorry, I had some technical difficulties. Um, I just want to chime in real quick. Um, Mr. Fellers, I, I've been in your situation where you're, you're trying to get some clarity to move forward. Um, so, I, so I'm empathetic to that. Um, if I could make a couple of, uh, share some thoughts or, or recommendations that maybe, um, at least for me, might, might help the compatibility. Um, the other commissioners would, would have to obviously speak for themselves, but um, I think I agree with you that there's a, a unique condition with your, with your property. Um, I think there also might be a missed opportunity that um, you have this wraparound porch along the south side. Um, I think when I look at your, your concept here, um, it looks like you're kind of continuing that fence um, to the north. Um, which really kind of, you know, backing out of, uh, of the, uh, the nuances and the, and the guidelines and just looking at the overall intent um, kind of detracts from the hierarchy of the house. Um, whereas I think that there may be an opportunity, and I don't want to design it for anybody, but um, I could get behind kind of extending that porch around where it feels like it's part of that maybe original character of the house, and then trying to make your side yard um, feel kind of uh, like a secondary element. Um, that, I think that may help um, the compatibility. Um, now, there's still gonna be the issues with satisfying the setback with the pool and, and different issues that you'll have to jump through, but um, I don't wanna give you false hope. I don't wanna, um, make you spend more money. Those are just kind of something that I see there that I think may be an opportunity to, to help you get a little bit closer. Uh, and then the last thing that I'll say is, is what I did on my house uh, when I went through uh, this process um, and I didn't have clarity, rather than risking that third, uh, that uh, pass or fail, uh, I, didn't, I did a proposal uh, or a presentation at the end of one of the meetings. So if you, if you feel like or staff feels like um, you're making progress and you want to kind of touch base and get comments without it having to be a thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, you could do a presentation as an opportunity to kind of further that dialogue and help get some clarity. Um, and that's all I've got. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, that is an interesting idea about uh, a presentation. I know I've done that for a planning commission item before. Um, is that something that you've seen or that you, that, I guess they'd have to let you know by June, whether that's some, I mean, by, uh, by next Tuesday, whether that's something they want to do or. So is this is Katie. We, we really don't do presentations okay. for things that are clearly addressed by the guidelines. Okay. We we've done presentations for, for ground up new construction in the past. I appreciate that suggestion um, very much uh, commissioner Ramey, but we, we try to not open that can of worms on items that we have very clear guidelines for of people coming in and wanting to get that 
you know, sort of preliminary input. Um, so I don't, it's, it's something we can discuss with the applicant, but we, we typically strongly discourage that, that kind of approach unless it's a really unusual, unique project where people aren't able to get a clear sense from the guidelines of, of what's, um, what's allowed. Uh, as you can see, we've got, you know, we usually have a dozen or so applicants each month and to add, you know, a couple of presentations each time would, would just make for really, really, really long meetings. So. I appreciate that, Katie. That makes a lot of sense. So it sounds like, um, I think we need to keep moving here. It sounds like a continuance is in the works. Um, uh, so it sounds like the June meeting, uh, is that, uh, does that work with you, Jeff and Fred, Mr. Fellers? Yes. Okay. Then do we have a motion to continue? It's the June 2nd meeting, just for okay. motion making purposes. Yes, thank you. Well, this is Commissioner Schultz and I'll make a motion that we uh, continue uh, HPCA 21-0007 to the June, I know you just said it, what was it, Katie? Second. Second, Second. meeting. I second right. the motion. Moved by Linda Schultz. Second by, was that? Uh, Meacham. Okay. Second by Meacham. And please vote. All right, this item is continued. Uh, I appreciate you, uh, Jeff and Mr. Fellows, for your patience, and thank you all for your comments. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, moving on to item two, HPCA 210029. This is at 721 Northwest 28th Street, Paseo Ward 2. Consideration of possible action on application by Caressa Teague, Oki Solar for Paul Mays for certificate of appropriateness to one, install solar panels on slopes of the secondary structure elective. Uh, the commission saw this application previously and continued it largely uh, in order to get additional documentation from the applicant of what the solar panels would look like once installed, photo documentation that has been provided by the applicant and is in your packet in PrimeGov. And I believe we have the applicant's representative on the Zoom call to respond to any questions. Staff has uh, recommended continuance on this once again, just simply because as the, as the guidelines are written, solar panels are not, um, are not supported by the guidelines in a location that's visible from the street. Uh, but uh, you do have that additional documentation uh, before you to consider today. All right, so we have the applicant present. Is that correct? I think they're muted. I see the. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I, All right. I, I, I'm not sure if the applicant, if the homeowner is present, but this is a lie with Oki Solar, uh, representing for Mr. Paul Mays. Okay, perfect. Appreciate it. And uh, we will get back to you momentarily. And is there anyone from the neighborhood present? Or just the public? Want to come Did back? not get any comments from the neighborhood on this uh, application or any comments from surrounding neighbors. Uh, the applicant did provide le a letter of support signed by several neighbors, and that's included in the attachments of your packet, but no other uh, objections on this case. And I don't believe we had anyone else indicate that they wanted to speak on this case. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Katie. And do we have any comments from commissioners? So we continued it. This is Commissioner Schultz. It was continued from the March meeting. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. That's yeah. Accurate. yeah. The and the reason what, that we continued it, even though it was against the guidelines, was could someone help me with that? The applicant just had some additional photographs. I, I believe okay. that they could provide on the product that they were looking to install. Yeah, so. this is Katie. All we had uh, the last time were um, technical drawing specifications for the solar panels, but we really didn't have anything showing what the product would look like on a roof. 
Um, and I think everyone felt like that was important to evaluate, um, to know what it would look like. I agree with uh, Commissioner Schultz. After reading the staff report and the specific findings, I think it would be difficult to uh, approve the project uh, due to the uh, trying to follow the guidelines. I mean, yeah. Any other I, mean, I think this is a good example too of of what we just kind of went through with that last one and uh, so and that's why I, I really wanted clarification I, because I was not at that meeting so I apologize to you for that yeah there was there was quite a bit of discussion on this item um you know I, I guess my stance on this is uh the only reason it's really visible is because there just happens to not be a house on the corner lot to me the location of those solar panels are about as min minimally uh, visually and you know, invasive as, as you could place them. Um, besides, of course, placing them on the north side of the roof, which wouldn't do any good from a solar perspective. It's on a secondary structure. It's behind the rear of the, the main house. You know, the unique circumstance is just that there isn't, there just happens to not be a house on the corner that would typically block the view. And that's not to say that there wouldn't be a house in the future at some point. So I guess my view, you know, I feel like there's justification to uh to allow for the solar panels in this case but you know that's my kind of two cents on this i i i i'm with uh, commissioner schultz i just want to say that I, I i'm not in disagreement with solar panels but i just don't think that um in a historic district it's just a difficult um project to insert particularly not just for the owner and that you can see it from the street. I mean, people driving down the street don't really notice that much, but if I had to, if I lived in a historic district, I don't, even if all the people living there around there said, yes, I just feel like that it's not a view that the, that the, the people that live next door, particularly the people that live behind are, are just looking directly at the solar panels. It's not something I would move into a historic district thinking I'm going to live next door to a house that has solar panels. And then, it, then, so, so that's kind of, I mean, I, I'm for solar panels, but in this situation, it just, it feels once again, it's just too many, um, too many guidelines have to be excused. And I think it would be hard to make a motion and make a unique circumstance. I agree. This is commissioner Schultz. This is commissioner Farzana. Um, I know we kind of maybe talked about this last time, but solar shingles may not be available currently in Oklahoma, but those would look a lot more like real shingles. Like you really can't tell the difference. So maybe in the future, that's an option, but solar panels are very, they just stick out is my concern as well. And this is Commissioner Zacherts. That's my concern as well. And there's a house just by way of example, I believe it's west of Walker, not in an HP district that has solar panels installed and you can see them very clearly um, driving down Walker, even though it's not a corner lot. Um, and I would imagine that the adjacent homeowners have opinions about those. So I, I have a hard time with them in our neighborhoods. I think uh, this is Commissioner Ramey. Um, so I, I don't have a, a personal issue with solar panels. I think where I get stuck is that um, the guidelines seem to be pretty clear, um, and I don't know that they really allow um, for the solar panels in this in this instance. So, it, do the guidelines need some work potentially? Is that up for discussion in a workshop? I, you know, I think all those are good conversations to have. I just think it's very difficult to approve them based on the current guidelines because I think it's pretty uh, pretty evident if you if you follow that guideline. Well, I think there's a pretty clear consensus among the commissioners. Um, Ali, are you present? And do you have any any comments or you know any final comments or concerns that you'd like to any response that you'd like to make? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yep. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you for for the opportunity. I do. Um, I do want to say that the homeowner has uh, supplied um, you know support from his uh, from his neighbors in the area. 
in regards to the system. Now, the panels itself, if you guys um, would have a chance to take a look at the attachments, there was a second picture there that was supplied to give an example of how the panels would look. Now, with the panels itself, the only thing that you would see, if you could see it from the street, would be the actual panels themselves. All of the additional equipment, the racking material, the uh, electrical lines, everything else will be hidden out of sight, um, including any exterior um, equipment. Um, all of that will be out of vision from, from any location around in front of the home. Now, with the panels, they are somewhat behind uh, the neighbor's home there. And with the system here, again, with, with, with solar energy, it's a growing thing. Oklahoma is growing with solar energy. It's getting more and more popular every single year. Uh, Oklahoma itself is ranked seventh in the nation for the state to receive the most amount of sun. So we are primed for solar energy. And again, with the black sleek panels, I don't feel like they would be um, visually inappropriate from the areas of view, if that makes sense. I appreciate that. It sounds like it, uh, you know, kind of really uh, comes down to the guidelines or the commission's interpretation of the guidelines on this. Um, I mean, I, uh, you know, I feel on, on this particular case, you know, as far as, you know, the, I guess intent of the historic preservation district is to preserve the historic character of the buildings. And to me, um, that generally, you know, includes permanent modifications to structures. And to me, concern, you know, the concern about the potential visual impact, which I think will be slight on this property, the fact that these are, you know, not really permanent modifications to the properties. Um, you know, personally, I feel I don't have as big an issue with it, but I also understand that we do have the guidelines and I think this is something that we need to talk to, through in a future workshop, but it sounds like, um, it sounds like the commission has a pretty clear consensus. Um, I guess we just need to put this out to a vote or, or do we have a motion or any other comments from, from ULI or from the, from the neighborhood, anyone else? No, I just appreciate everyone's time. Go ahead, Mr. I, I think you're about to say something here. Yeah, no, I appreciate you too a lot. And um, yeah, do we have a motion on this item? I would make a motion to deny uh, HPCA 21-00029 with the specific findings as noted by the staff in the staff report. I'll second this Commissioner Zacharitz. All right, moved by Commissioner Meacham and seconded by Commissioner Zacharitz. This is Katie. Is that to deny with or without prejudice? Uh, you have to explain it again. I never can remember which. Well, is with with prejudice would mean they could not return with the same application for a year. Without prejudice would mean they could come back at any time. With I, I would say this in this particular situation, uh, I would just go for the year with prejudice. Okay. With yes. prejudice. Thank you. All right, I, I have not seen, uh, oh, maybe I'm on the, oh, there I is. apologize, I was on the wrong screen here. So, no, it was removed and seconded by Commissioner Zacharitz. Still waiting on the second, I believe. All right, please cast your votes. All right, the motion passes. Um, so uh, Ali, this motion was denied, um, but if you have any questions or you need any clarifications, you can get in touch with uh, Katie Friddle or Angela Yetter of the HP Commission and they can provide you some guidance. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, item three, HPCA 21-00032. This is at uh, 614 Northwest 14th Street, Heritage Hills Ward 6, consideration and possible action on application by Patty Grotta for certificate of appropriateness to one, uh, widen driveway elective, two, replace gate elective, and three, construct lighted columns elective. Uh, th this is the first time the commission has seen this application. 
uh, staff did recommend a continuance um, largely based on the fact that the columns and the proposed gate exceed the height of um, the um, what the guidelines allow for fencing. So the, the columns supporting the gate and then the gate itself exceed the height. Um, we did not have any particular issues with the proposal to widen the driveway, but didn't see any justification for uh, a gate and columns that didn't meet the guidelines. All right, thank you, Katie. And do we have the applicant with us today? Looks like I can see your name, but I looks like maybe- Can you hear me now, Mr. Vice Chair? Yes, I can hear you, thank you. Okay. And uh, was there anyone else who wanted to speak on this item from the community or neighborhood? Okay, it doesn't sound like that's the case. Um, so do we have any comments from commissioners? Mr. Vice Chair, may I address you all first with some corrections in the staff report, which I think will help guide your discussion. Sure, go for it. Real quickly, I submitted a um, scope of work back in November and after speaking with Angela, I redrafted it and had a site plan designed by an architect. <laughs> and so I resubmitted it back in January, February. So some of the heights on the columns and gate, I think came from the first scope of work that was changed in the second one. So the scooped gate, now the proposal is for six feet, which meets the guideline, except for the swoop on the end. Does that make sense to you all? Do you have the picture of the proposed gate? Yes, that does mm -hmm. help. And, and I think that might be something that um, if it does meet the guidelines or largely meets the guidelines, that's something that staff could administratively approve. So that's something that we could probably have as a uh, condition, um, you know, that if it meets the guidelines, you know, if the drawings weren't exactly correct in our packet, you know, we could add a condition that um, should it meet the guidelines, uh, staff could administratively approve that. And if, you know, if they didn't, uh, then of course you could probably come back for a final meeting to defend. Well, and then the second thing about the column height, it's seven feet because the columns on the porta cachere are seven feet. And so we did them so they would match the existing columns. Okay. Well, I appreciate those uh, clarifications. Um, so I'll turn it back over to commissioners for any comments and then we'll allow you to respond to those comments. Oh, Mary Jo, I think you're speaking, but I, I think you're oh, muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Can, we approve, can we approve this if we approve the uh, seven foot column and the and that staff receive a, a final uh, drawing or uh, a drawing of the gate and the exact height. I don't have any concerns with that. Yes, uh, you all could approve that with those as conditions. And that the gate height would be uh, the six foot height? Is that what the... The, the oh. actual gate would be six feet with the decorative top just being 4% of the entire gate, which would swoop up. Oh, oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes, I just I just wanted to be sure that we that we got the that we heard you correctly. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And staff you did mention oh yeah and staff you said that this would be acceptable as well. You guys would be comfortable with that configuration. Uh, I think, you know, staff's recommendation was that it, it particularly the gate, that that mat meet the guidelines right. for height. Um, we didn't see a, a unique circumstance to justify not meeting that six foot height limit for fencing. Um, I understand the concern about the columns matching the, the port of share columns, but it's really the commission's call on if you um, feel that's appropriate. So regarding the gate, um, you're saying the ends kind of swoop up and that there's a percentage, I think 4% that you mentioned, is that, um, I guess, within the confines of the columns, is that kind of 
where that design element comes in or is that a, um, I guess, describe that design element. And also staff, is there any flexibility on that or are the guidelines uh, very black and white that all elements of the fence have to be at exactly um, six foot? This is Katie. We've always interpreted it because we often see gates that either dip down in the middle or arch in the middle. And we've always applied that guideline as that that height limit is for the fence or gate at the tallest point. So it's okay. not the average height. It's the tallest point shall not exceed six feet at the front and sides, eight feet at the back. Okay. And um, is that, uh, this is the applicant, um, Mrs. Grada, is that a custom gate or is that something that uh, is like something that you can order? And it's going to be a that? custom gate. Okay. So and it may not be a big, big deal to go down to, you know, a few inches to make that compliant, it sounds like. The only thing it would, to make it look right with the seven foot column, the swoop is going up to the cap there, like mm -hmm. in the picture. Um, also, I would just point out that our existing gate is eight foot tall right now. So the one we're proposing is far closer to the guideline and just using the unique circumstances of our existing column height to make it work. Right, I'm not, I'm not sure, at least speaking for myself here, um, you know, the column height makes sense if it's matching the existing columns. Um, as far as the gate, I'm not sure, you know, I think sticking to the guidelines there kind of makes sense to me, uh, but I'll let the other commissioners comment on that and uh, we can go from there. Where, where's the other seven foot, um, or where's the other column that you're matching? The two. The Sorry, I think we're, we lost you there for a second. This is Katie. They're matching the columns that you see there at the front of the portico share. Okay, well, I mean, the column that I'm seeing in the drawing, that, that was my other, my, from before we started was there just wasn't enough drawings to actually tell what was gonna happen. But I mean, if the column is just matching the short column, is that, to, that's what I understand that it's gonna be like a stone column with a cap, then I don't really see that the height of that, I mean, are you gonna put the wood um, part of the column on top of the column back there? I, I don't really see the seven foot column. Or the, the pier. Oh, the pier. The, the base, the base of the column. She's matching the base of the Is column. it seven feet? That is what I understood her to say, say oh. a few moments ago. Okay. It just looks shorter to me. Seven if, feet. But anyway, I don't. Perhaps we could make, a, you know, if we made a condition that the new columns in back match the height of the columns in the front or something. I don't know if that. I think it'd be easier if we just said that that column would have to be a little shorter in order to incorporate in, in order to match the height of the six foot gate. I do too. I agree with that. And then essentially it would be an administrative approval anyway. I mean, if we. I think the gate that she has chosen with the scoop in the center if she is proposing um, a short column with a cap, caps are typically, Mary Jo, you might know, what, three inches? Can we offer three inches over the height of the gate overall so that that little curled edge isn't sticking up in the air on its own? That'd be okay. That'd be okay. But that's a lot to do in some kind of motion. Um, well, um, would that then be within your administrative approval? No. Six foot tall is within administrative oh, approval. Okay. If the commission okay. were to approve it at not to exceed six foot four inches, would that give adequate space for that feature? I think you could, um, this is Katie, I think you could motion to approve with the condition that the gate not exceed six feet in height and that the columns 
extend no further beyond the gate than is necessary for the cap. Okay. Okay. <laughs> is that uh, is that acceptable to the applicant? Um, I apologize. Um, are you still with us? I think we may have lost her, yeah, but not intentionally. <laughs> but I think that's where she was going. I um, think she's well, back. Can you okay. hear me? Yes. Now we can. can you hear yes. me? Yes. And you guys, the computer died right as you yeah. all started talking. Well, yeah, apologies for that. We can kind of catch up to speed real quick. We just okay. uh, were considering a uh, motion to approve this with a condition that um, we would allow four inches, I believe, is that the, uh, to allow for the column cap. And um, well, then that could be administrative. We could work the rest of that out with uh, staff. Does that sound like a, what everyone discussed? I want to make sure I get that right. Yes. So essentially the, the column would, um, you know, the column would be uh, shorter than that seven foot by a few inches, but it would, um, you know, still be able to accommodate your gate, so. Okay. I guess I'm not understanding the whole, you all are wanting to approve the gate at six feet with the end piece. Right. That, that we, would, we would make a motion to high. approve the gate at six with the entire gate at no higher than six feet, but allow you to uh, have the column be somewhat higher to accommodate uh, the design component that you're trying to do on that end, the curl or the uh, whatever. Angela is saying that the that it would be then just three to four inches higher than the six feet. Right. Would you all consider doing a, a few more inches? Just I'm afraid that then the center of the gate will be closer to five. And I just for security purposes, I, I understand the six feet. And since so little of the gate it would exceed that, I would prefer that. I think the discussion went the six feet if, if you want if you want a motion to approve that we need to have i think we're in agreement okay turn your hey mary Jo. i think we're getting some feedback maybe on your line or someone's line i don't know someone has multiple yeah i think oh, yeah. that was miss grata's second line oh, okay appreciate it yeah uh, well, I think today we were in agreement that we would go for the six foot fence. What was your, because why did you need it higher? Because just for the security purposes, I mean, I, the six feet is what my gate is right now without the topper and that matches the fence that goes with it that you can see the wood fence is six feet as well. I mean, that is a good point in the sense that if that fence is exactly six foot and you put the column right next to it, um, you know, the, the column cap extends out a little bit. So perhaps you'd want that column cap to extend above that. So it, it isn't awkward the way it dies into that column. But that goes back to our comment about allowing the column to be six foot four inches. That would accommodate that, so. Well, like I've, I've said, the existing columns are seven feet. Right, in the front, yeah. So the sight line would look the same. Honestly, would you like, would you like to continue this to the next meeting so that you can work with staff? Well, yeah. Sure. Honestly, it, yeah. Could go, you, go ahead. I'm sorry. Is the oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> I would like the commission to take up the driveway proposal today 
and then and continue the gate and columns for their um, and I'll get with Miss Frittle or Miss Yetter. Uh, since I'll staff 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 uh, uh, so, uh, you know they in the staff report staff uh, said I mean their comment is to approve and I would I would make a motion to approve item one widen the driveway to 10 feet. I'll second Commissioner Zacherts. All right, so we've got a motion from Mary Jo Meacham to approve uh, item, was that item one? This is Katie, just yes. confirming that's with the findings in the staff report. Yes, that's with the findings in the staff report. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, and then second by Ann? Correct. Let's see. Uh, Okay. Who seconded that motion? That was uh, yeah. Commissioner Zacherts. Commissioner, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, please cast your votes. All right, and that motion passes. And uh, we discussed continuing the second, uh, the second items and um, potentially you could work with staff to get that administratively approved. And if you cannot come to a configuration that works, then we can hear it again. Uh, we wanna continue that to the May meeting. You would need to submit items uh, next Tuesday or we could do the uh, June 2nd meeting, I believe is that date. I think we better do June. Okay. Then do we have a motion to continue? I make a motion to continue to the June 2nd meeting, items two of HPCA 21-00032. And I would suggest that you have a, a drawing that shows exactly what you're wanting to do so that we can see that connection between your gate and your uh, column. Gotcha. This is Katie, just confirming that was for items two and three. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. With the specific findings noted. Oh, no, I don't need any specific findings to continue. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Mary Jo. Do we have a second? I'll second Commissioner Zacherts. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Zacherts. Please cast your votes. Mary Jo, how are you? I'm oh, sorry. You I'm trying. There. All right. And I did not see a summary page, but I'm assuming that passed. Yes, it, yes, it did. I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's fine. Thank you, Mark. Um, all right. So you are continued to the June 2nd. Uh, thank you, Patty. Thank you. All right. On to item four, HPCA 21-00035. This is at 624 Northwest 15th Street, Heritage Hills, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application by Jeff Blake, Gummerson Blake for Jeffrey Labov for certificate of appropriateness to one, remove existing arched door surround, column, front porch slab, steps and walls elective, two, construct new front porch with roof, columns, railings, steps and walls elective, and three, remove shutters elective. Um, staff has recommended approval for all these items. We know from uh, historic sandbar maps as well as historic photos that this uh, property had a covered front porch at one time and that the original entrance to this property was in a completely different location. So that entry is not the original or historic entrance to the, the property. Um, based on those facts, we felt that the proposed design was appropriate to the style of the house. Um, on the shutters, we, we did not have evidence uh, one way or the other to support that they were historic, but based on what the, the applicant has submitted and, and some information that I believe the neighborhood provided as well, 
felt comfortable supporting approval of the shutters as proposed. All right, thank you, Katie. And uh, Jeff, are you still with us? <laughs> I am. All right, and um, do we have anyone else on the call who would like to comment on this item? This is Randy Ice with Heritage Hills. Uh, we, we've sent in some written comments on this as well. And um, we believe that the there originally was a porch. All right, appreciate it, Randy. And uh, do we have any comments from commissioners? And then we'll get back to uh, allowing Jeff to respond to anything. This is Commissioner Schultz. I think it's fine. I don't have any problems with it. This commission for Arizona, I totally agree. I think that would be <laughs> good. a good thing. <laughs> I'm good. This is Commissioner Zacherts. I totally agree as well. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, do you have any final comments from you or? No, I, you know, <laughs> obviously the design kind of speaks for itself. This is nothing but improvement. So I'm glad you all see it that way. All right. And Randy, any final comments from you or anyone else on this call? No. All right. Well, this might be a world record. Uh, does <laughs> anyone want to make a motion? Uh, I'm happy to make a motion to approve HPCA 2100035 uh, items one, two, and three with the specific findings as noted by the staff and the staff report. I can, I'll second Commissioner Ferzana. All right, moved by Commissioner Meacham, seconded by Commissioner Farzana. Please cast your votes. Uh, Commissioner Schultz, uh, are you good? How do you vote? Yes, but I can't find it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. Thank you. No, no they're out. Close vote. All right, congratulations, you are approved. Thank you. All right, and um, Katie, real quick, before we move on to the next item, do you mind if we take a quick five minute break or? Do yes, we, we can we can uh, recess for for about five minutes and then we'll reconvene at uh, let's aim for 411 according to the clock on my computer. All right, that sounds good to me. All right, see so you all back at 411. Is that what you said? Okay, perfect.
Commissioner Phillip, I have a question for you. Yes. So I have mentioned this in one of the emails, I think it was to maybe Katie, but at 4.30, I have to head out. How does that work with, um, with this? Because we still have a quorum. That right, that's just... totally fine. If you need to head out and we have a quorum, you know, that's fine. And uh, um, actually I have to pick up my daughter at part 30. So I'm gonna try to keep things moving so we can get through efficiently as best as possible. No, absolutely, I'm not saying it would take, it just, I just had to be somewhere, sorry. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, that happens all the time, you know, you know, obviously we all have uh, work and other things going on. Right. So yeah, that happens all the time. So yeah, if you if you ever know in advance that you need to head out or whatever, just let us know. And, and normally we'll know if we have a quorum or not. And yeah, it's not a big deal. So I okay. appreciate it. Yeah, if you want, uh, you said at 4.30. 4.30. So actually, uh, that might be in the middle of uh, this next one. Um, Do you make an opportunity to inform us that you're leaving so the time can be noted? Gotcha. Specifically. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, it looks like we're at 411 and we have, um, if everyone can turn, if commission members can turn their cameras back on and we will do another roll call just to confirm everyone is back in attendance. All right, so um, ready for, you ready yeah. for the roll call? Go for it. Yep. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Fudge. Commissioner Raymond Phillip. Present. Commissioner Corzana. Present. Commissioner Meacham. Present. Commissioner Milner. Commissioner Poor. Present. Commissioner Remy. Remy. Uh, Commissioner Schultz. Present. Commissioner Zacharitz. Present. We have a quorum. All right, thank you, Mark. So we are on to item uh, D5, HPCA 210037 at 621 Northwest 25th Street. This is in Jefferson Park, Ward 2, consideration and possible action on application by Holly Hunt, Sam Gresham Architects for Amaro Montoya Lopez for certificate of appropriateness to one, remove screened portion of porch required, two, construct porch columns and floor required, and three, replace front porch steps with brick elective. The commission saw a different application, but for this same project at this property previously, it was for work that had been uh, initiated without approval and they came in to seek approval for the work they'd started. They've since come back with a revised proposal that removes the brick arches and goes back with columns. Uh, staff has recommended approval with some conditions uh, addressing the spacing of the columns, the removal of a pilaster that's proposed on the uh, uh, west corner of the front of the house and with a condition that the steps be concrete instead of brick as they were historically. And I believe we have Holly um, on the call to speak to this application. All right, perfect. Thank you, Katie. And Holly, are you there? I see her name there, or I saw it temporarily. But um, I guess in the meantime, uh, do we have anyone else from the public who was uh, interested in speaking on this case? Okay. Um, well, uh, I did see Holly Hunt on for a second. I, I don't know if we want to start discussing before she jumps back on or if she'll call in, but um, we could start the conversation and then uh, bring her up to speed. Do you, does any commissioner? Uh, any commissioners have any comments on this? So this was one um, portions of this were denied at the last meeting. However, it uh, looks like Holly had come back with a uh, revised um, design.
This is Commissioner Port. I don't have any specific comments. I'm just happy to see this come back, um, kind of rectifying some of the concerns that we listed before. I, I agree. agree. Yeah. Agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, as we're waiting for um, Holly to potentially be able to speak, uh, staff has had some conversations with the applicant, and we we know that um, despite the condition we recommended that the steps go back in concrete, the applicant would really prefer to keep the brick. Um, so perhaps if you all want to spend just a moment discussing that, and then we'll see if we can get Holly connected here. And then if not, I think we'll have to go ahead and continue this because we don't have their consent to those conditions at this time. Okay. Yeah, anyone have any comments on that particular item? But we could approve it subject to the steps going back to, uh, with, a con with that condition, is that right? I mean, do they have to agree to that for us to approve it that way? Typically we, typically we don't, uh, this is Katie, typically we don't approve an application with conditions if the applicant hasn't agreed to those conditions. Okay. I mean, personally, I, I don't have a, you know, problem with the brick uh, steps, um, but that's my personal opinion. I'm not sure if that's hard and fast in the guidelines. Um, it may, I mean, it may be, um, let me look at the staff report on, uh, but. It is a specific bullet that you might want to yeah. glance over. Let me go find it. I think I would prefer to see them go back to concrete over brick. I, would I mean, I would, I would approve it if that was the condition. Can anyone hear me? <laughs> yes. Sorry, Sorry everyone. everyone. Um, you know. <laughs> Imagine that, technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we got you uh, loud and clear now. So um, we had just started a little bit of the discussion on some of the conditions. So. Um, yeah, I guess we can just go back to that discussion and then we can turn it back over to you for any comments or responses. So, and to summarize, I guess uh, we were just discussing the uh, brick steps. Um, I believe I'm looking at the conditions now. And, and there's a condition about a pilaster against the uh, house, um, which I see, what, I see what staff is getting at. I don't think that's a typical configuration, but I think that'd be a pretty easy, you know, pretty easy, pretty easy change, administratively approvable, I would think, so. Sure, uh, yeah, I have no problem removing the pilasters. Um, I think my thinking there was just to, in keeping with what they had already constructed to kind of finish off the porch with an edge of trim, basically. Um, but we can just allow that. I mean, it'll take some siding repair, but we can certainly do that. Holly, are you in agreement with the conditions that they noted in the staff report? Well, my here, here's where uh, I think that the four columns is successful, is it does create an even rhythm of spacing among the columns. <clears throat> and so to me, that's just more aesthetically pleasing. Um, I also like that there's three bays across there, an odd number in design usually works well. Um, so to me, it, it but again, the, the homeowners have expressed to me that they just don't wanna to have to pay any more fees. They wanna be in compliance. Uh, they were kind of led down this road uh, unknowing. Um, they were convinced by their contractor that he was doing everything in compliance and clearly he wasn't. So, um, you know, I think they're amenable to the conditions if, um, but, you know, I'd like to hear from the commission um, on that. Is it, is the four columns across the front in the simpler design that I've submitted, is that, um, do y'all have any opposition to that or what do y'all think? I mean, I totally hear what you're saying about designing in threes and having uh, that rhythm. In this, in this case, I feel like, I'm just trying to think of the other kind of um, porches I've seen, small porches like this. And it, it did, I feel like you do often see like the, the two that kind of frame the entry mm -hmm. and then it'd be kind of an open space. But I mean, that's just me personally. I, I'm not here where you're coming from too. But to me, it sounds like, it sounds like the commission is pretty, you know, pretty happy with the changes and subject to the conditions. I think we could 
know, I think this would be pretty easily approvable. Um, well, let's move honest. to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with the conditions, guys. Let's just get y'all on to the next one. I know y'all okay. on your agenda. All right. So you, so the uh, applicant would, uh, or the uh, the owners would agree to the conditions. It sounds like. Do we have any other comments from anyone, or do we have a motion? We did not have any comments from the neighborhood on this application, and we don't have anyone signed up to speak. Okay. Do we have a motion? Before I make a motion, Katie, are you, um, I mean, do you feel like that, um, or I guess if they, if they want it except for the brick, I mean, is there, I, I'm not, I, I understand what you're saying, but since we're not putting, since it's not what was there before and we don't know what was there before, is that the situation or are we replicating the same number and, and we have that documented for the public? for the columns. We have no previous example of what was existing prior to the screened in porch. Okay. This recommendation is based entirely upon similar smaller porches. It's not based on a historic condition. I guess unless anybody cares, I would make a I would I would make a a, a motion uh, to approve all items except for um, with I don't know what your specific, except for the replacing of, except uh, not the the brick steps. I I don't mind the columns if that's what the if that's what the homeowner wants and and it's new construction really. What do you say? Specific findings. They should match. I mean, they should match their original. I still think that um, the installation of the four foot. I don't know. I would. So I guess I would uh, make a motion to approve item one with the specific findings, item two with the specific findings, except for I would delete specific finding five. I don't think that's true all the time with uh, no pilaster will be constructed. That's the one against the wall to, to deal with an issue. I would say I would eliminate that condition and eliminate the 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 number of columns to be reduced to three. And then I would approve item three with the specific findings uh, and the condition that new concrete steps match. Holly, would that work? Yes, ma'am. That's why anyone else, uh, anyone else have any comments on that or? No, Commissioner Poor will second that motion. So that was I would a motion. very much like to make sure I understood that. Yes. It was. Okay, Angela. Approve item, approve item two with specific findings, except specific finding number five, and except for the condition to remove the pilaster. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Thank you. Okay, so that is a motion, and uh, that was by Mary Jo, and we had a second by Commissioner Four. Excuse me, uh, the, the chairman. Yes, I was just trying to figure out which. Uh, can I? Would this be a motion to approve as amended? This Sorry. would be a motion to approve. I would say as amended. Yes, because it's not. Because uh, Commissioner Meacham has recommended some changes to the. Uh, no, uh, no, we don't, no, we don't say it like that. I get to change my the findings instead of saying I I agree with staff's findings. I'm going to agree with staff's findings minus the number five and no conditions. Okay, this is I'm not sure what yeah, the Mark, in, in PrimeGov, it'll just be a regular motion to approve. And then in the minutes, we'll um, revise the specific findings that we include in the minutes and the conditions in the minutes. But for PrimeGov purposes, it's just motion to approve. Thank, thank you, I'll, I'll click that. All right. All right, so uh, I guess yeah, we're waiting on that. Do we have a second from Commissioner Poor? That is correct. Yeah. And please cast your votes. Just so I'm clear, one last time, I'm sorry. We're removing the pilaster but we can keep the four columns along the front. 
right. no, you can keep the pilaster, you can keep the column. Okay. But you have to change the steps. Am I correct on that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. And it seems like, are we waiting on someone to vote or? Is, is uh, Commissioner Farzane, uh, is he still in the meeting? I'm here, but it's not, uh, it's still stuck on like the agenda on my screen. How, how, how would you like to vote? Yes. Yes, okay, great. All right. And thank you all, I'm sorry I have to head out. It's probably a good time for me, but next time I'll reply all to everybody. So I apologize about that. Well, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thank you, sir. Take care. Yep. There's probably going to be another motion. And thank you, Holly, for uh, you are approved. So have a good Excuse day. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Yeah. Is there a second motion for this item? Uh, there was a second from Commissioner Poor, but I think I think that was uh, the only vote that we needed on this because it was a. Um, That's correct. Both this, that, yeah. Right. This is Katie. That included all items that was an approval for all of the items. So we can move on to the next agenda item. Perfect. So we're on to HPCA uh, 21-00038 at 201 Northwest 35th Street. This is in Edgemere Park Ward 2, consideration and possible action on application by Kenneth Onchman, AIA, Preservation and Design Studio from Matt Goad for certificate of appropriateness to one construct an accessory structure studio elective. This is uh, the first time the commission has seen this application. It is a ranch style house at the edge of Edgemere Park adjacent to the interstate. Uh, the applicant has proposed a accessory structure in the backyard toward the east side of the yard, kind of beyond and behind the house and the attached garage. Um, and staff has recommended approval. Um, just to clarify, because we had this question earlier, studio refers to being a, a workspace, not a studio apartment. This is not a intended to be a dwelling. All right, thank you, Katie. And do we have an applicant with us today? Yes, this is Matt Goad at 201 Northwest 35th. All right, I appreciate it, Matt. And do we have anyone else on the line uh, that wants to comment on this project? I believe uh, Catherine Montgomery and Kenneth Oshman are also on the call. Yeah, okay, we're perfect. All concerned together here. All right. Uh, well, then we will circle back to you guys, and I will turn it over to commissioners for any uh, questions or comments that they might have. No questions, no comments. Looks great. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and staff has recommended approval on this one. Um, so it sounds like there are no comments or objections. Do we have a motion or any other comments from the public? We'll put that out there before we go to motion. We did not see if there are any conditions in this or anything that we need to address individually. Um, let me double check. We did not receive any comments from neighbors or the neighborhood association and we did not have anyone else signed up to speak on this item. And I believe it is just a straight recommendation to approve with unique circumstances. All right, so do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve HPCA 21 with the specific findings as noted by the staff in the staff report and the unique circumstances. All right, motion made by Commissioner Meacham. Do we have a second? This is Ann Zachris, I'll second. All right, we've got a second from Commissioner Zachritz. Please cast your votes. Is, is Commissioner Parzane still here or is, is he already left? Oh yeah, he is no longer uh, with the meeting. So I'm not sure there's any procedural thing we need to do, but he is absent. Yeah, I'll, I'll he left at 437. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, that item is- 426 is, is when he left. 
All right, so 426 is the official for the record. All right. So that item passes. Uh, appreciate you, Matt and Catherine and Kenneth. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Hope you have guys. a good evening. All right, we are on to item. Uh, uh, are we on to seven or eight? Item seven. Uh, item seven, okay. Item seven, HBCA 210040 at 524 Northwest 16th Street. This is located in Mesta Park, Ward 6. Consideration of possible action on application by Garrett Moore for certificate of appropriateness to one Sorry. demolished garage elective. Um, the uh, staff report recommends a continuance on this one simply um, in order to give the commission opportunity to determine whether um, they've provided sufficient documentation that the garage warrants demolition. And I believe the applicant is going to, is uh, present and can provide further information about the condition of the garage. All right, thank you, Katie. And is the applicant present? Uh, yes, this is Eden and my husband Garrett is here as well. All right, great. Thank you. And is there anyone else uh, who would like to comment on this project? All right. Sounds like there is no one. Um, do we have any comments from commissioners? Well, I'll say uh, looking at the pictures, um, you know, from the outside, it you know, it, it looks pretty nice. Uh, but of course, uh, <laughs> looking at the other picture, as you see the rotted kind of bottom plate and the wood um, is in pretty bad condition. So you said you had some additional information or some other comments that you wanted to share, I think. Um, yes, I do. I've, um, we've had several discussions with um, our framer and our um, concrete contractor and people like that. Basically, our previous owners did a really great job of making the exterior of the building look nice. The in interior is just completely rotted and every joist um, you can kick and they explode from termite damage. Um, basically, what would have to be done um, to this structure is um, to individually take out each uh, stud and replace them individually, individually, and then um, jack the um, structure up on steel plates and lift it in order to pour a new footing and uh, stem wall and foundation. Um, so speaking um, with staff previously, that is just kind of goes beyond what you would uh, see financially uh, fitting for a separate structure. All right, I appreciate that. Do we have any other comments from commissioners on this or? Well, Are you planning on oh, uh, building a new, a new uh, garage? Uh, yes, we, we do plan on getting um, architectural renderings for that. We just wanted to make sure obviously first that we would be able to uh, tear down the current garage. I mean, Katie, don't the guidelines say that if you have, if you know what the existing garage is, then the, then once you tear it down, you would rebuild what was there? The guidelines state that uh, construction of a new garage should approximate, and I'd have to look to confirm if it says should or shall, but should approximate the appearance of a historic garage, all the design features of a historic garage. So yes, typically when we have a historic garage that has been documented, um, when someone comes in for a new garage, we're going to reference that historic structure for the design, the placement, et cetera. So do you know the size of this garage, the dimensions? Um, I do know that the garage uh, is seven and a half by 20. It's a single car. Right, but the building, is the building 20 by 20? Um, it is 20, let me pull that up really quick. Let 
by it's 20 by what? 20, yes. So you're just you're just under 50 feet of, of what we allow to be built. So uh, just I guess fair warning that uh, a garage like that, we would expect somebody to come back with a proposal for the 450 square feet. Okay. I think. So. All right, so that sounds good. That's, um, and I'm sure you can work with staff a little bit as you're working through the design on that. Um, and I guess today you're only here for the demolition. So, you know, personally, uh, we, you know, it's consistent with kind of uh, other projects that we've seen kind of that kind of damage on and um, approved demolition. So I don't have a problem. I, I definitely see the issues that you specify with the structure. So. I don't have an issue with your request for demolition. I don't know if any other commissioners have any thoughts on this item. And if not, do we have any other comments from anyone in the public or do we have a motion? Um, I don't believe we had anyone else signed up to speak on this one. We did get a, an email from the Neighborhood Association too late to turn in um, for your packet. And they just simply said that they agreed with staff recommendations on all of the Mesta Park applications. Um, I, I may have missed conveying that previously, but not, you know, not a controversial comment to share. So that's all. Okay, thank you, Katie. Do we have a motion? Or any additional comments? I make a motion to approve. I've already moved on to my next thing. What's the, let me see. Uh, uh, HPCA 21-00040 uh, to demolish, uh, item one to demolish the garage with uh, specific findings from the staff report. But can I use those specific findings, Katie? Um, we probably need to need to note that the findings that um, findings include uh, pres uh, uh, evidence presented by the um, by the homeowner justifies um, uh, the deterioration I guess is that what you're yes that addition approve with the additional finding that the owner documented the the owner provided the documentation identified in specific finding number four uh-huh okay um, and with the standard uh, demolition of a historic structure approval motion. Yes. This one's to continue. I'm sorry. We have that language that says the specific finding that the proposed work will have an adverse effect. Will have an adverse, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, Mark, uh, uh, this is this is Mark's first time uh, clerking an HP meeting. So I know <laughs> that Angela and I are taking very thorough notes and we will, uh, get all of this straightened out in the minutes. And by the way, we appreciate you, Mark. So <laughs> thank you. Pretty soon I'm going to order the pizzas. <laughs> right. Yeah. Send one my way. All right. So we got a, um, we got a motion by uh, Commissioner Meacham. Do we have a second? I'll second. This is Commissioner Zacherts. All right. Second by Commissioner Zacherts. All right. Cast your votes. I'm not sure if we're still waiting on someone, but. I don't have the option to vote. Okay, who's- It hadn't been seconded. Yes, it's been seconded by Ann Zacharitz. Who's, who's, um, is- Commissioner Poor was having trouble. Okay. Well, it doesn't show on mine that Ann sec seconded it. It may just be um, moving slowly. Um, Mark, do you want to do a voice vote for any that haven't indicated their vote yet? Uh, Commissioner Schultz? Yes. And uh, Commissioner Poor. Poor? Yes. Okay. All 
All right, that item passes and uh, you are approved. So moving Thank on you so to, much, everybody. Yeah, appreciate it. We'll see you when you get your uh, new design drafted. Mm -hmm. so. Great, thank you. All right, item, uh, item eight, uh, HPCA 21-00043 at 837 Northwest 38th Street. This is in Edgemere Park, Ward 2, consideration and possible action on application by Michelle Alexander, Copeland Construction, for Matthew Cannon, for certificate of appropriateness to one, replace burned half of roof elective, to replace burned east wall elected and to replace damaged overhead garage door elected. This application is uh, addressing a fire that occurred in the garage at this uh, structure and staff has recommended approval with a couple of conditions. Uh, the one condition was to use wood siding rather than smart side as the applicant has proposed because we typically require wood siding to be used on the historic structure and to submit a revised uh, proposal for the garage door to staff um, prior to release of the CA uh, that meets the guidelines. All right, thank you, Katie. And do we have the applicant with us? I see the name, but... I think you're still muted. Can you hear me now? now? Yep, I can hear okay. you. They kept muting me. I don't know why. Um, I just, hi. Okay. Hello. Uh, yes, this is Matt Cannon. I'm the homeowner. Um, I don't know if uh, the representative from Copeland Construction is still on the line. I'm not sure if they budgeted enough time this, for the meeting. I think they had to go. So I think it may just be me. <clears throat> um, yeah. Go, just. Yeah. Oh no. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, so just to make sure I understood correctly that what was the, uh, the finding or the, the response for the request for uh, smart siding? The, uh, guidelines generally do not support using substitute products like smart side on a historic structure, which includes garages. So our recommended condition was that you go back with the wood siding that matches the historic siding on the garage. And then the other recommended condition from staff was uh, to submit a revised proposal for the garage door replacement um, that meets the guidelines for garage doors. Okay. So even though it's it's not visible from the, I mean, it's a pretty far setback and, and it's not visible from the road, uh, that's something you wouldn't uh, consider the specific smart siding product. It's got a smooth finish, just like the, the front. And um, I mean, that, would you mind elaborating elaborating on that a little bit? Is there any is, is there anything we can do to 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 make that possible? Um, the uh, let me see. Sorry, I'm just trying the uh, specific guidelines that talk about um, siding materials. Um, so if Original or historic materials do not remain. The original form may be reconstructed or restored. Let's see, that's not right. Um, new materials should match the historic and material type, dimensions, design, configuration, texture, texture, surface coating, and visual appearance. Um, and then what we have on substitute siding materials is that installation of fiber cement products may be appropriate for rear or side elevations not readily visible from the public right of way in order to replace wood siding that is missing or deteriorated beyond repair in all districts except Heritage Hills. Uh, if determined appropriate, the fiber cement siding shall be consistent with the size, pattern, shape, dimensions, and texture of the historic wood siding. Um, fiber cement siding is the name brand is that we usually see as Hardy, Hardy Plank. Um, the commission Correct. has on a case-by-case -case basis approved smart side in places where Hardy is allowed. Um, but we typically have not approved uh, fiber cement or smart side products on the historic structure. Okay. And that is on, um, that guideline is on page five of the staff report. If the commission or applicant is looking for that language. Um, right. Bottom of page four, top of page five. Okay. Yeah. The reason we were, we were proposing it was that 
the fact or, or kind of back to what you spoke to earlier that that it wasn't um, visible from the roadway. It's a pretty far setback. It's you're looking basically there's really no way to see it uh, unless you go up on the property. And the fact that our when we purchased the home, um, there is a a mixed uh, finish of siding. And what you're looking at right now is the south side, um, which isn't even the same as uh, the the e what the east wall was. So in essence, we're kind of trying to match that as well. So if you notice the kind of I call it a tongue groove or whatever you you call that, um, it uh that didn't match to begin with. And considering the that it is next to the um, I mean, it's a garage. It's outside. It's not visible. It'd be more more durable to to. It would match, and it'd be it'd be more preserved over time. Uh, it would just be a better product um, to have on there, and it wouldn't necessarily affect it. Well, you wouldn't see it. Number one, number two, it wouldn't necessarily um, be a different finish or a different appearance. If anything, it's going to look different if you go back with the same. Uh, to the side you're actually seeing from the road. I so, appreciate that, Matt. Uh, do we have any, I guess, do we have any comments regarding the siding um, from any commissioners or on this particular case? I mean, in this instance, I would rely on staff. I mean, I, I get what the applicant is saying uh, and it is pretty far back. Um, you know, I don't know. It's a tough one. It, you know, we do have some leeway on uh, alternate materials that are, you know, durable and that weren't available historically. Um, I'm not sure about if it's an actual historic structure coming back with something like this, but because it is a secondary structure and it is located pretty far back, I'm not sure I have a, a real issue with that. Katie, can you elaborate? I know you mentioned party board also and smart side is there a difference between the two as far as what can be approvable or is it just um wood versus everything else um this is katie we uh the guidelines when they were created address specifically addressed fiber cement as um, permissible in certain circumstances at that time the products that were available that were smart side which is more of a uh, it's just a different type of composite um did not come in the range of finishes and profiles that the commission felt were appropriate to allow on historic structures. We have since seen um, smart side products that are a good match and that are comparable, if not better than a hardy or fiber cement product. So the commission has pretty consistently approved smart side in locations where the guidelines would allow for hardy um, or fiber cement. Uh, so I think those two materials, as the commission has reviewed them, have become fairly interchangeable. I think it just comes down to the commission's comfort level with allowing it on a historic garage, as opposed to where we typically see it on an addition or on new construction. And it's a, a tool for differentiation from the historic structure. Sure. Well, but as yeah, you said, the guidelines, do, um, uh, sorry, the guidelines do allow for its use in certain locations so okay well i appreciate that i kind of feel um if hardy board might be allowed here given the fact that they have new you know if it's um you know if it is similar and smooth to that you know original uh siding appearance i don't have an issue with it personally but all of my other commissioners uh weigh in on that as well i thought that that was fairly specific about new construction where we had uh, where, where the guidelines allowed smart siding Katie isn't that right the guidelines allow um, these pro alternate products on new construction um, you know, standalone new construction new construction garages um, additions new additions but 3.1.34 is addressing existing historic buildings and talks about them being uh, that it may be appropriate for rear or side elevations not readily visible from the public right of way, um, which this certainly seems like one that's not readily okay. visible from the public right of way. Um, we have just left that to the commission in the past to determine if that's an appropriate uh, product. 
Linda, do you, do you have any other comments on that or does that satisfy your question? Well, I'm, I'm looking back to see what, exactly kind of where they're proposing to put it. So just give me a second. Okay, sure. Uh, while you're looking at that, do we want to take a look at the other condition about uh, garage door meeting the guideline? I guess maybe you propose a metal door, but the guidelines require a, um, I guess, a wood panel. Uh, door. Do you have any thoughts on that? Or... Are, you, are you are you asking me, the homeowner? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sorry, Matt. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was just making sure you're talking to me. Um, yeah, we had we had existing um, existing metal doors on there when we purchased the home uh, several years ago, and that's what's been on there. Uh, but the uh, yeah, there it is. So that one that one's kind of working, and the other one's completely gone because it was ripped out. Uh, by the department. <laughs> so we just wanted to go back with whatever was compliant. Um, I mean, not honestly, I'm not pushing either way. I just want to <clears throat> just wanted to go back with what was the most appropriate. So that's really uh, up to the commission on that one. I just need to have guidance to uh, for the construction company and also to provide documentation to my insurance company because there is a price difference. So um, I'll lean on you guys to let me know what you think would be best. Okay. Yeah, this I think the Katie. guidelines are pretty clear about this. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is Katie. I was just going to say that um, wood doors, wood veneer over a concealed metal frame or composite materials, including fiberglass or wood fiber, uh, are allowed. It's just the, the metal uh, vinyl clad um, product that the guidelines don't support. Um, so a lot of times we see the, the wood doors with the um, recess panel. Uh, but we can absolutely work with the applicant on a garage door that would meet the guidelines. Okay. All right. So that sounds like something that you would be um, open to. Uh, you would accept that condition, then, I suppose. Is that correct? You're just happy. You, you will um, put whatever door that is compliant with the guidelines, it sounds like. So that gets us back. Yes. To that's correct. I just want to make sure they match too, because we'll have to put in two doors. So, you know, one's, you know, sort of operational now, but the other one's gone. So we'll have to, I want both of them to match. I, I assume you guys too, do too. Um, but that was just uh, just to make sure it was two doors, not just one. Because there's there are two doors, one on each side. It's a two-car garage. Sure. Okay, so could you, I think uh, Linda and I both wanted to know exactly where would you put the smart siding if you applied that to the garage we're looking at the front would it be on the side that faces the yard or the fence or the back just the side that faces the fence that's the east side i'm, I'm not we're not going to touch any of the other three sides <clears throat> that i'm aware of i mean i don't think there's enough damage internally to any of that siding to, to need to remove it so it's just that side you're looking at now um the fire was was concentrated on the east wall that faces the fence. So that that whole side you're looking at there, the east wall is what we're talking about. The rear is going to stay, the front's going to stay, the the west wall is going to stay. It's just the east. So when you're looking down the wall from the road, if you can even see the wall, I mean it's set back probably 150 feet from the road, and it, it's probably a six foot. Um, you're, you're basically standing six feet below, almost eye level with the garage with the uh, driveway. So yeah, you can see it right there. Um, I would, I'll let you make up your mind on that, but I, I, it's difficult for me to see the east half, east side of the garage from this angle. And it's, there's not really any, any angle you can see it. So that was, that was part of the guidelines that I was really looking at to see if it would comply because it isn't visible from the road. Well, does that mean then that we would, if we approved it for that side, then when down the, that we would essentially be approving same product for the front when the next owner, let's say, wants to replace the front siding? I mean, are they going to say that that matches the east side? I guess I'm just trying to figure out how if you had a, a, one material on the east side in terms of are we really approving it for the entire garage somewhere? down the line. I, I see where you're going. It seems like the, the easiest and best would be just to match the original. We've got three-fourths of the garage has the wood and just finish it out. With the, yeah, that's kind of where I am too. 
Well, it's it's wood, but it's two different types of siding. So what you what you can see from the road is not the original siding that was on the garage when we purchased the home. So that smooth finish you're looking at there, that is a different. It's a different. Um, that smooth finish you're looking at is not the same as the east wall. So you're not. It's it's wood, but it's two different styles of siding. So I, I wasn't trying to justify it based off of All right. um, that. Yeah. It was just I would prefer to have a more durable material being a garage. And because it's not visible and it actually coincidentally matches that matching it is not the justification. It's it's more of the durability and the fact that you can't see it. So now how you guys view it down the road, that's difficult to say, but um I think that since you're facing, since you can see the front from the road, it would violate the guideline you just said. So I would, if you're sticking to the guidelines, you, that wouldn't justify replacing that South facing uh, wall with smart siding because you could see it. So do you have, do you have any original uh, siding on the garage other than the East side? Yes, it's the other side. So like if you, the side, yeah, the only side that has the, that smooth finished wood is the south side. The one you can see. Right. Yeah, there you go. So I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess my thinking would be if you put the original siding back on the east side, it leaves the opportunity for somebody to put the original siding on the front if they wanted to. Yeah. That's the way that I would go on this. Well, Matt, is that a, is that a deal breaker or is that a condition that you could agree to? Or uh, a condition to to go back with the original kind of wood? Yeah, to go with the wood siding versus the smart side. It sounds like that's uh, kind of a consensus um, from the commission, but. Seems like I, it's not a huge area. It looks like it's just that one east side, correct? Yeah, it's my yeah. The reason I'm pushing for the more durable smart siding is because it's a more durable material, and a lot of the wood products out there are not like they used to be, and it's not going to hold up as long over time. So, well, that's a great point. I think uh, I think Commissioner Meacham's touched on this as well. I mean, you can't find that old growth. You know, the more denser wood, and it is more rot prone, and you have to prime it. At that point, you might as well go with something that's a little, uh, you know, a little more durable. And I guess the way I see it on this, it sounds like there is a justification, even within the guidelines, especially because it's not facing the street. And it looks like there's a pretty, you know, quite a mismatch of siding on this building already. Um, and the siding on the south side is not original. So I guess personally, I don't have a problem if you go with the smart side, but, um, you know, I, I hear what you're saying about going back with wood. I think you know, it, it's not going to be the same type of wood product that you had a hundred years ago. So does the smart right. siding match anything else? What does it match the smart siding? Well, the, the idea would be the finish would match what you're looking at now would be the South side. And what you don't see in the pictures is we, we did an addition that was approved uh, through the commission two years ago uh, on our, our main home, our main residence that has the same smart siding product. So it actually, it would match. I don't know if you can go back to our home, the big picture. Um, I'm not sure if you can even see it, but it would match the, yeah, you can't see it. Um, it would match the addition, which is, which goes uh, out the back of the house to the North. So when you look at the garage and you look at the actual home itself, it would match. I mean, it would uh, visibly would match. I mean, you obviously couldn't see it from the road, but when you go walk up the driveway, it would match. That smooth finish, there you go. You can kind of see it. Well, no, you can't actually. It, it would match more the, the main home siding. That siding you see that was burned, that is the only place where that old siding exists on any of the entire home itself. So the continuity and the, the it, to me, it, it looks nicer to, to match the actual home itself as well. I mean, I don't know if that was in our staff report. I doubt it was, but that's just another consideration. Mary, uh, Commissioner Meacham, does that change anything? Oh, I, I, you know, I'm just, 
I guess it's hard to make, you know, if I had four pictures of each, if I had a photograph of all four walls and I could see the continuity of something, it would be easier. But I mean, I think we need to. Yeah. I hear is nothing matches, but this would match the front, which is not original, but there is only original on the. Any of it? I, I, I'm, I'm no, just. The original's, on the, the original's on the north wall. The west wall has this smooth finish as well. Right. So it's really, it would be bad. You'd be matching three sides, and the, the north wall is the, the only old one left. Yeah. So it's a smash. And then the smooth think, finish of yeah. the main residence itself. So you, you, you're matching more if you put go back with smooth on the east. Yeah, I think we need to um, probably provide some clarification or provide some guidance to the applicant on which way and then either make a motion or. Um, so I don't know. I, I personally don't have a problem with the smart side. I think there's enough, you know, there's a lot going on with the siding. Um, I do. I do uh, sympathize with your, you know, comments about the durability. Um, so those are my those are my thoughts. But I mean, maybe we get some final thoughts from commissioners, and then we uh, we can get a motion on this. This is Commissioner Poor. I think after hearing the comments, I don't have an issue on our side as well. All right. Well, do we have a motion? Yes, he's going to make a motion. Let <laughs> us try. Let me get back. Hold on. Okay, so I will make a motion for HPCA 21 0043. Um, I got to get to my. For item one with a finding, let's see, that's, am I on the right, hold on. That's fine with items one, following the staff recommendations and findings. Items two, um, following the findings, not with information. What was that again? I'm sorry, you're kind of breaking up on my end or is that my computer? No, I, you're breaking up a little bit. I think it's your giving feedback. Yeah, maybe Mag, could you maybe mute yourself and then maybe that'll help with the audio? I'm not sure who's. Okay. Okay, so, that sounds better. Yep. So HPCA 21 0043, um, following the staff findings for item one. On item two, following the staff findings, except for the condition of the wood siding. Um, allowing for the smart siding and then um, item three following the staff specific findings and conditions. Does that make sense? Yes, that works. All right. So we got a motion yes. by Commissioner Four. Do we have second. a second? Meacham. We got a second from Commissioner Meacham. On item three, is that two doors or one? He Any says doors. Two, two. Yeah. Both. Two doors. Both. Yeah. Yeah. I am in the vote option. Okay, do we want to take a verbal for Commissioner Poor? Maybe. I vote um, yes. Four votes yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Zacharitz? Oh. Commissioner Zacharitz? Yes. I think that's it. And that uh, item passes, so thank you, Matt. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, on to item 
nine HPCA twenty one zero 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 four four at uh, five seventeen Northwest Nineteenth Street. This is in Mesta Park, Ward 6, consideration of possible action on application by Fallon Brooks, Jolly Bird Design, LLC for Jake Shuffler for certificate of appropriateness to one, replace windows elective and two, construct two-story garage with added paving elective. You'll note that in your staff report, we have an item for an addition that um, we made an error and that did not make it onto the agenda, even though it was in the staff report and in the notice. Um, so we can't take action on that. Um, I did hear from the applicant that they intended to ask for a continuance anyway, because they're going to work on some of the comments that were in the staff report. Uh, I don't see the applicant's name um, on the call right now. I don't know if one of these phone numbers is, is the applicant, um, uh, but with the commission may want to confirm whether anyone is present that wished to speak on this case, and otherwise we can just continue this one to... Um, I don't know if we want to skip to the June meeting to give them time to make those changes. All right. So um, thank you, Katie. Is is the applicant present? I'm not hearing anything. So maybe we do just uh, continue this one to the uh, June 2nd meeting. Sounds like that's what the uh, applicant was planning on anyways. So do we have a any other comments from anyone? One more call for the applicant, maybe. Nothing. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion then for a continuance? Commissioner Poor will make a motion for HPCA 21 0044 um, to, um, oh, what's the word? Not postpone. Um, continue. 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 Thank you. Yep. To the June 2nd meeting. Yes. All right, we got a motion by Commissioner Poor. Do we have a second? I'll second Commissioner Zacherts. All right, thank you. We have a second by Commissioner Zacherts. Please cast your votes. And are we waiting on someone or? I'm going to might just be a little slow today. Yes, sir. Oh, there we go. All right. And that item is continued. Real quick, before we go on to another item, uh, Katie, I have to leave at approximately 5.30. Um, we can try to get through the other items, but um, it looks like we still have a quorum if I had to leave. Is that correct? Yes, we do still have a quorum if you leave. Okay. And in that case, um, do we know who would chair that meeting? Is that clear or is um, that person aware? <laughs> Anne, would you be comfortable chairing as the uh, commission attorney for a couple of cases? If, if John, if, um, if Klaus has to leave? Uh, I apologize I, profusely. <laughs> I, yes, I don't have any of the, the text or anything I'm supposed to, the questions I'm supposed to ask or the comments I'm supposed to make. So uh, it'll be great. <laughs> It'll be rough. <laughs> just, just read the uh -huh. items and then tell everybody to hurry up and make a motion. <laughs> That's pretty much the job. So, <laughs> boss, just keep keep this moving along. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. So we are on that note. We are on uh, HPCA uh, twenty one zero 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 four five at five twenty Northwest twenty one. This is in Mesta Park, Ward 6, consideration and possible action on application by Teresa Delaney for a certificate of appropriateness to, one, replace canopy and stairs at garage elective, two, relocate and replace pedestrian door and window at garage elective, three, replace garage doors at equal size elective, four, replace one garage door with pair of outswing doors elective, and five, replace siding of garage elective. And uh, this is a uh, re- location reconfiguration of exterior stairs on a garage. I believe they're addressing some concerns with the location of an easement um, and having to relocate the, the door based on um, relocating the stairs. And uh, we did approve, we did recommend approval with a number of conditions related to the design and placement of the stairs and the stair landing and to completing the documentation of all the materials for the proposed work. All right, thank you, Katie. And do we have the applicant with us? 
Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh. Thank you, Teresa. All right. And uh, was there anyone else uh, on the call that wanted to comment on this project? All right. Sounds like uh, you're the lone uh, <laughs> member here. So do we have any comments from commissioners on this project? Were there any comments from the neighborhood? Uh, all we got was the email from the neighborhood association that didn't make it into your packet, but that just said uh, that they agreed with staff recommendations on the Mesta Park cases. Okay. I would say I, I, I agree with your findings and conditions, staffs. I agree. Do um, Teresa, have you had a chance to review those? And do you have any comments on I, the conditions? And I did review them. And what, um, as far as with the siding, my intent is to be able to take off the existing, um, I'm assuming it's asbestos siding and examine the original siding that's underneath and see if it is um, in a good enough condition to, to um, sand and repaint. So, um, so that's my intent. If it's not, there is an area where the existing stairs are up against the, the um, building and it wasn't properly flashed. Mm. Um, they were, in the, so, I know I'm gonna to need to replace the siding there. So I'm gonna to try to find like siding if I can use the original siding um, or reuse the original siding or to get um, a lap siding, which looking at the structures, um, houses in, in the area, um, they tend to be using the lap siding. So, and my house uses shake siding, so it's it's completely different than what siding is underneath. Well, what you're describing, I think, is our kind of ideal scenario. Um, you know, see what's underneath there, see if it's in good shape, and if you can salvage it, great. And um, if not, then I guess uh, either you can work with staff, or um, you know, if it's not something that is clear cut, um, you know, come back to the commission, and we can work out uh, how that. Can be rectified so okay okay great yeah. uh, and and then on the garage doors it appears that they are just plywood and there's no edge on the plywood so wherever it was touching the ground it's rotted out so my intent is to be able to keep um it's on like just rails it does it's not it's a manual open door uh, mm -hmm. but all three of those are different sizes and they're not wide enough to fit a car in them. And so on the right hand side, that's the widest one. So, um, so I'm hoping to be able to have at least two equal size doors. And then the middle one would be able to open to be able to have access to getting things out without having to open the overhead door. So that's definitely things that I think that we have um, probably approved in the past and examined. Do, is that rec um, reflected in the drawings or is this something that staff was talking about wanting to see reflected or? There is an elevation that I submitted. Um, not sure if it got in your package. Um, oh, uh, well, I, yeah, never mind. The one I'm looking at, it looks like there's still three original or there are still three doors, but maybe you just made them even. Is that correct? Or? Right, yes. The center oh, okay. one would be a little bit smaller than the other two. Gotcha, okay. Um, let me see, was that, Katie, was that addressed in the staff report? I'm trying to look uh, real quick, see if. Uh, um, this is Katie. The conditions that we recommended on the garage doors was just that the dimensions of the existing doors be documented and that uh, new garage doors be painted, not stained. Okay, perfect. Okay. And, and those are conditions that you could agree to? Oh, um, sure, sure. Okay. I um, guess I'm, what I'm hearing is, are you, are you intending to actually enlarge the two garage doors openings on the sides? Um, the two on the side to make- Or the one on the- Right now, they're not even eight feet wide. 
So. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Are mm -hmm. you intending to structurally yes. make a change? Yes, that's we my intent. To, we would need a drawing for that. Yes. You need so, elevation or floor plan? What? You need elevation and floor plan or elevation? Is Whatever, right? Katie. I'm just going to say um, drawing. So the conditions would be to approve with drawings for the new configuration for the, the uh, right. garage, which would have to come back to us, Katie, or not? Okay. Well, I, I submitted that, and it's in part of the packet. It's on. Yeah, sorry. Maybe I just didn't see that. I'm going to try okay. to find it here. Let me see if I can. I just saw the one elevation I showed new, but it was kind of difficult to tell. But. Um, but it's, on. Okay. it's page, page eight. Hey, Jay. Uh, eight foot, okay. Two eight foot doors on the outside and a six foot door in the middle. Thank you for finding this. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yes, I see that. So, okay, I see that. The green oh, is okay. that the original configuration. Yes. And then, um, okay, I see. Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So you got that. So, yeah, I don't see an issue with that. I mean, you got to have okay. a usable garage. Did you, did you submit a garage door for approval? Um, it's going to be um, plywood but with trim around it, wood trim, like a one by four wood trim. And I think I may have put that in some text somewhere. I think those are, those drawings are shown in the packet as well. That's oh, okay. Awesome. So is, is the only thing that needs to come back to staff a final approval for siding? Since um, we don't know what it is. Yeah, well, can I, once I investigate, can yes. I notify you of what notify staff. Okay. Yeah. So staff, depending on, I mean, if it's if the original siding is something salvageable, you wouldn't have to come back to the commission. I think that would be something that would okay. be pretty easily approvable with staff. It's That's only if you come back with something that maybe uh, wouldn't be, you know, approved by the guidelines. You know, that would come back to the commission. Okay. So, okay. okay. Um, and then the the fun part is on the east side. So. You can kind of see in this picture, there's a huge um, power pole, utility pole that's in the corner of the yard to the left of the garage. And the stairs are right in between that. Um, and there's um, the door um, going in there is all the way to the very south of the um, right next to where the power pole is. Um, so when we had the winter storm, the pecan tree basically came down, a huge limb came down and took out the railings for the stair and the canopy that was over it. Um, the, nothing about the stairs was code compliant. Um, the railings were two by fours um, with the lattice, um, that you would typically use in a garden. Um, and the stairs risers were not the correct um, correct height. They were too low and too high at the top. So I was gonna need to replace the stairs anyway. So, um, and right now they're not flashed correctly on the wall and so it's rotting the siding out. So I was proposing to pull the stairs out a little bit from, from the wall to be able to keep it from rotting it out again. Um, and have, yeah. have, you read, have you read all of the conditions and are you agreeable like on that part that you're talking about? Um, the window, the blinds, the, the doors, the dimensions, uh, I think I, 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 when I, I have a question with staff with it says the expanded landing should be reduced. Katie, is that something you all want included? So typically we see, you know, exterior stairs on the garage. The landing is the same width as the stairs themselves. And right. they're right up against the side of the garage, just as the previous stairs were here. With these extended out from the side, it makes the landing a lot larger and it's more like a little deck up there on the side of the garage. Um, and it's not really the well, typical configuration. So the, the, I understand the applicant's concern about the stairs and touching the siding and that sort of thing, but that was just our concern yeah. that it's not the well, historic appearance. And, it, and it's also, also the reason for having that 
landing larger is just to allow to be able to, to safely go in and out of the door, um, especially moving furniture. Um, the way that it was configured now, it was pretty scary just trying to, to move anything in and out of it. So that um, those, those were my concerns um, of trying to do safety. If it's something that you don't want, then I will figure out how to move it closer. Um, it allowed for easier maintenance to have it pulled out a little bit. Um, so, but the OG&E requires eight feet from the power pole. So that's why I was trying to figure out how to make it safer so I'm not going in and out right next to the power pole. And um, so that's why I was talking about replace or switching the door in the window. I don't know if the door in the window would last pulling them out and, re and switching them. So I propose to have a new door and, and window. Um, I, I know the comments about it um, were that it wasn't the same or it would look right. different to the neighbors. Um, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, is, do you know, this is not really visible from the street, is it? I mean, it's kind of, no. um, it's not a corner lot. It's not, a, no. I, I'm not sure that I have a, a big issue with that. Um, I mean, the connection is simpler to the house. And anytime you have a long run of anything, against the house, you're right, it is a, a little bit of a tricky flashing challenge. Um, but I, I mean, I'd love to hear what other commissioners have to say about that, but I'm not sure I have a huge concern about, you know, the, the slightly expanded landing there. Um, because be, it is so- I would be in agreement uh, also if, if the applicant uh, would just uh, go back to staff and just thoroughly go over the conditions to make sure that they understand uh, what the conditions are. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Would that work? If for some reason there's a condition that you don't want, you could, I guess you'd have to come back. Right. Right. I would be more than happy to work with them. Well, I just want to clarify too, if we did make a motion on this to approve it, I think one of the conditions was maybe that that landing was larger. So yes. um, if that is something that we felt was appropriate, maybe we can at least add that in to the motion so that, um, you know, for that particular item, they wouldn't have to come back. I uh, agree. So, okay. Well, it sounds like, I think those are all the major items. Um, and it sounds like you're generally, uh, you know, agreeable to the conditions. Of course, we discussed about the one condition um, regarding the landing. Um, is there any, any other comments from the public or from commissioners or from the applicant? Just one, one more comment from uh, my dog. She loves sitting up on the landing. So we would appreciate a larger landing. <laughs> All right, appreciate that. That's have to do with historic preservation. Katie, and you'll just, you'll, you'll just uh, tell Teresa what um, additional documentation she needs. Yes. Okay. I would make a motion to approve HPCA 210045 item three with the specific findings and conditions as noted in the staff report to approve item one and two with the specific findings. Um, there's a lot of findings. One through 17 with the exception uh, with the, and deleting uh, item 11 re in regards to the relocation. And no, say, no not that one. Where, where's the, I'm sorry. Um, it's the size of the landing. Oh, uh, would that be number six, that the relocation, uh, delete that one and delete seven. And I think that's, that would be the specific findings and the condition would be uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, delete number six in regards to the expanded landing and include item seven in the unique circumstances and approve item five with the specific findings and the conditions noted by the staff report and the unique circumstances. So 
Teresa and staff, you have <laughs> kind of a complicated, it's kind of complicated, Teresa, but I think yes. we'll sit down and go over it. I develop a plan to address okay. all of the conditions. I, I will definitely do that. So um, thank you. All right. So we, we had a motion from uh, Commissioner Meacham. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Zacherts. Thank you. We got a second from Commissioner Zacherts. Please cast your votes. And I have a question. How long do I need to wait before I can pull any of the siding off to investigate? I'll let Katie, yeah. Okay. This is Katie. So there is a 10 business day appeal period for the approval of your application. Once that 10 okay. business day appeal period has um, lapsed, then uh, we are able to release your certificate of appropriateness, but okay. we will have to work with you over the course of that time to get any additional documentation okay. that we need so that you can. Okay. So I need to, I need to wait for that. Okay. Yep. Commissioner or Zana, are you, are you casting a vote? This is Commissioner Rainey. It's not popping up, but I vote yay. Okay, thank you. And then, uh, it, hold on, Linda Schultz. She's Commissioner Schultz, are you, are you gonna cast a vote? Uh, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, uh, that item passes. Um, so Teresa, you're approved. And then of course you can get with staff on any of the small remaining items or with the siding. Okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you. And, um, okay, we can just move on real quick to HPCA uh, 210046 at 824 Northwest 16th Street. This is in Mesta Park Ward 6, consideration and possible action on application by Ryan Fogel for certificate of appropriateness to one, remove portion of driveway elective, two, construct garage elective, three, construct fence elective, four, replace portion of driveway elective, and five, remove pony wall elective. They are um, uh, proposing to make alterations to the, um, uh, to the driveway and to construct a new garage. Staff has recommended um, approval of the work to the driveway, but continuance of the garage and continuance of the item addressing the pony wall. Uh, guidelines do not appear to support a two-story garage in this location and we didn't feel that we had sufficient documentation of whether or not the pony wall was a historic feature to recommend approval of that. All right, I appreciate it, Katie. And do we have the applicant with us? Yes, Ryan Fogel is here. All right, hello, Mr. Fogel. And do we have anyone else from the neighborhood or um, from the public who would wish to speak on this item? Um, this is Katie. I will note that we have a, a letter of support that was sent in previously and did not make it into your packet. Uh, the letter is from uh, Corinne, Corinne Simon at 900 Northwest 16th Street and just states that they um, support the application for the two-story garage, that several surrounding neighbors have built two-story garages and it has improved property values, that the garage is minimally visible from the sidewalk or street and that the layout will have minimal impact on the line of sight for those driving and walking through the neighborhoods. All right. Well, I appreciate that, Katie. And actually, I'm sorry, because it is, uh, I need to run picking my daughter from daycare, but um, so I will turn this over officially to Ann Zacherts. I apologize, sorry for uh, leaving early, but um, I'll see you all next month. So. All right. Uh, do we have any members of the public who wish to speak? Hello, any members? Of Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Can yes. you identify yourself, please? Yes, commissioners. My name is, should I go ahead and present my argument or... My name is Raina Polofsky, and I live with my husband, Stan Polofsky, at 822 Northwest 16th Street. 
where we've lived for almost 30 years and our property abuts the applicants on the east. Um, this is Katie. Typically we'll let the commission um, ask any initial questions that they may have of the applicant and the applicant respond to that and then we'll take additional public comment. Okay, great, thank you. Commissioners, do you have any specific questions for the applicant? I would just ask staff how they determined that uh, the two-story garage was not appropriate for this location. Did you ask that of the applicant or the staff? I'm sorry. Staff. Yeah. Um, I believe this is one that is neither abutting a two-story garage, nor does it, uh, nor are they predominant on the block. Um, sorry, we have a couple of two-story garages, so I'm trying, I'm pulling up the staff report really quick to refresh my memory. Um, Angela, if you know details, feel free to chime in. This is one where we actually know the previous condition of the garage. And for this particular block, it was fairly consistent, very small garages with sloped roofs. We have photo documentation of the previously existing condition. Um, and so we must consider um, review of that previously existing condition for reconstruction. It also doesn't abut uh, any garages, right? I'm actually double checking that right now because I don't want to fib. <laughs> Um, it looks like we do have in the attachments um, uh, documentation of other two-story garages within the block. So there are others in the block. Um, well, that's not what the, what the guidelines say, but, right? It says, um, an abutting two-story garage, it says when photographic documentation is not available, then you can have a two-story garage, oh, okay. if one at an abutting property, or if there is one... Um, or if they're predominant within the block. So they're definitely not necessarily predominant within the block and we do know the previously existing condition. I know that there are several um, photographs that have been submitted by uh, members of the public that document the historic garage that was demolished sometime in the last year or two. Staff's last um, photographic, photographic evidence of this site was in 2015. At that time, the garage was in existence. Are there any other questions from commissioners to the applicant? I would like to speak if I can. Certainly. Okay. Well, um, yeah, again, my name's Ryan Fogel. I have been working in the area at Mesta Park since about 2018. Uh, we moved here almost a year ago and um, let's see. Basically, um, I provided some documentation. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's, I think page, sorry. It's it's in there of all the, the Sanborn maps, basically. Uh, we do abut a property to the south. It's kind of a unique condition, uh, block zero of the Harndale edition. It's, half of it is Mesta Park and the other half is Heritage Hills. So the south side of my lot abuts Heritage Hills and that property does contain a two-story garage, which was actually built in 1933. So about 13 years after mine was constructed. Um, on block zero, there are 28 homes. Seven of them have two-story garages. That's 25%. And three of those two-story garages were built within the last six years. Um, one as close as three doors down. And um, 
anyway, um, to the east, I do have an eight foot tall fence. And to the west, I do have a 16 foot tall garage with a zero lot line. Um, do you have any questions about the design? I can go over that. Um, but based on our findings and reading the guidebook, um, we feel that we should be able to, uh, to construct a two-story garage. Commissioners, any further questions or comments on this application? <clears throat> Are there any members of the public who wish to be heard? Yes, I wish to speak. And would you state your name again, please? Yes, my name is Raina Polofsky, and I live with my husband, Stan Polofsky, at 822 Northwest 16th Street. Our property abuts the applicants on the east. So just to give a little personal background, for over a decade, I served as the Mesta Park Neighborhood Historic Preservation Officer and was liaison to this commission. I'm a long supporter and defender of Oklahoma City's historic preservation guidelines and have been specifically committed to preserving the character and spirit of Mesta Park neighborhood. In fact, in 2017, my husband and I were honored by the, by the Mesta Park Neighborhood Association for our efforts to improve and support Mesta Park over the last number of years. I've also spent the last year and a half restoring a 120 year old pre-statehood homestead in Logan County. Uh, and I actually have people stopping on the road to ask me uh, if they can see inside. They're so excited about it. So it's with a long background in historic preservation, both in Mesta Park and elsewhere, that I come to you to strongly oppose this CA application. The proposed application directly contradicts the intent and content of the HP guidelines, and it adversely affects the historic character of the Mesta Park Historic District by creating a false sense of history. Not only that, but it profoundly and negatively affects the neighboring property, mine being the most extreme example, by encroaching upon our privacy, our aesthetics, and our environment. And the proposed garage apartment presents an opportunity for future misuse of the neighborhood single family zoning. So I'd like to take a couple minutes just to explain my specific objections to the application. I know everyone's tired and I'll, I'm gonna be as brief as possible, but there are several points I'd like to make. So my first issue is that the applicant didn't disclose the photographs he had of the original garage, which I sent him as soon as I learned that he was planning a new garage. And I apologize for not being able to present my photographs during the discussion, but I was told that it's not possible within the current Zoom meeting format. So. I'll direct you to view a photo of the original garage on page two of my letter of opposition. I obtained the photograph from the previous property owner. Now, as you all know, photographic evidence of the original garage has direct bearing on what's allowable under the HP guidelines. And I'll admit that it's really unfortunate that the CA application form doesn't explicitly all the photos of the original structure to submit it as part of the application. But it's quite clear in section 4.4.5 that such documentation dictates what is and is not allowable under the guidelines. You can draw whatever conclusions you will about the reasons for not submitting the photos. But for me, the fact that the photos were not disclosed really undermines historic preservation efforts in general. And it doesn't honor the implicit agreement that we all make to abide by the HP guidelines when we purchase property in historic preservation districts. Which brings me to my main objection to this application, and that is that it doesn't comply with the HP guidelines. The guideline most relevant in this case is section 4.4.5, which reads that construction of a replacement garage shall approximate the original configuration, form, massing, style, placement, and detail of the former garage as described by photographic or other documentation. Hopefully you've had a chance to view the original garage in my letter. I lived next door to it for 27 years until it was demolished in 2019, evidently without a CA. And as I've just pointed out, when photographic evidence exists, the guidelines state unambiguously that the original structure shall be approximated not might be, should be, or could be, it shall be. So in essence, this means that 
The new garage shall be a one-story shed roofed structure with garage doors that approximate the ones in the photograph of the original garage. The guidelines do allow, as you know, for a larger footprint to accommodate two vehicles. But aside from that larger footprint, the end product, according to the guidelines, shall look like the photo of the original that you've just viewed. Uh, if you have a question about the term massing or style or detail, I did provide some definitions in addendum one of my letter of opposition. Massing, for example, refers to the shape, form, and size of a structure. So I'd like to segue just for a minute away from the garage itself and point out my third objection to this application. And the applicant has proposed to demolish what he's calling the, the pony wall on the portico share. This is the small brick wall along the side of the portico share, which is typical of most of the portico shares in Mesta Park. The guidelines have addressed the importance of portico shares in section 3.3 and, and basically say that they're important features and are, uh, if they're visible from the public right of way, they should not be altered. The staff, you can see a photograph right there. The staff have provided photos of the pony wall. It is visible. It is an original feature of the portico share. It looks just like the one I have next door. Um, and so it should, it should not be altered. Uh, so that segue is over and I'll return back to the proposed garage application. Of course, we've already established that uh, the guidelines say that the original garage shall be approximated. But I do think it's helpful for you to know that 14 out of 15 of the garages in the 800 block where this house is are one-story garages. You can see this in an aerial view on page four of my letter. In fact, the, mass, the vast majority of garages in Mesta Park are one-story structures, many with shed roofs, and they represent a character-defining feature of the district. Unfortunately, many of the garages in the neighborhood have been demolished by neglect. We just saw one bite the dust today. Uh, or they've been altered from their original design. So I've included a photograph of my original shed roof garage along with its dimensions on page four of my letter. The fifth objection I have to this application is very personal to my husband and me. And that is that the proposed design negatively affects the privacy, aesthetics and environment of the neighboring properties, ours most significantly. And I'll direct you to a photo on page four of my letter which shows the spacing between our property and the applicant's property. It's just a sad fact that the small lots and close proximity of the houses in Mesta Park create the reality that whatever a person does with one property intimately affects the surrounding properties. I've joked with some friends that they, if they have claustrophobia, they'd better not buy in Mesta Park because we, we live in very close quarters. In our case, the distance between my house and the applicants is 15 feet. Our eaves don't even meet social distancing requirements because they're less than six feet apart. So you can imagine that a 22 foot tall, two story structure sitting immediately next to our fence line would profoundly and permanently alter every aspect of our backyard from the views we have of the charming rooftops in Heritage Hills to the amount of sunlight that reaches my garden spaces. There would be virtually no viable afternoon sun, which would mean that even growing grass would be difficult, not to mention growing flowers or other plants. You can see a photo of the current rooftops, the current view of the rooftops on page five of my letter, as well as an approximate rendering of the proposed garage from our side of the fence. So not only would this oversized structure obliterate our view and limit our sunlight, but the second floor window would overlook our backyard, which would significantly invade our backyard privacy. And not just our property would be affected because the stairwell to the garage apartment would be just feet away from the back fence and would affect the privacy of the neighbor to the south. So of course this was never an issue with the original garage because the shed roof design is entirely unobtrusive to the neighboring properties and allows for sunlight and views from all the backyards. Uh, the people of your evidently knew what they were doing for this reason. <laughs> Just a and finally, I object to the fact that in the future, the proposed garage apartment could be used for a rental unit, an Airbnb, or a business of some kind. It's really impossible to know how the space might be used in the future. And let's face it, enforcement of single family zoning can be extremely challenging to say the least. 
The property turnover rate in Mesta Park is high and there are already Airbnb locations in the neighborhood. So even if the applicants themselves don't plan to do any of these things, if history serves, they'll probably move in a few years, leaving the property open to whatever the next owners have in mind for the garage apartment. Meanwhile, my husband and I will have to live with whatever they build there for the rest of our lives because we're not really going anywhere, at least not right now. So I wanna make it clear that my husband and I don't object to the building of a functional two-car garage. The guidelines clearly allow for this. What we object to is replacing an original unobtrusive one-story shed roof garage with a two-story pitched roof garage because it's not consistent with the guidelines. And as I've said today, the new garage should look as much like the photo of the original as possible, only bigger. This allows the applicant to have their functional two-car garage while still preserving the look, character, and integrity of Mesta Park Historic District. Now, I mean, we can like the guidelines, dislike the guidelines, or be somewhere in between, but these are the guidelines we have to work with. These are the guidelines that were in place when the applicant knowingly purchased the property, and this application is not in compliance. So I've, I've really presented my objections out of a sincere desire to support and foster historic preservation in Mesta Park, as well as to protect the unique characteristics and views from my own historic property, which have remained undisturbed for 104 years. That's the purpose of historic preservation. So I, I, I ask that you ensure that the interests of Mesta Park neighborhood past, present and future are protected from this kind of gradual insidious erosion of its historic character. And I thank you for your time and patience. Uh, I know you're ready to get this meeting over with. So um, I appreciate your time today. Thank you for your time and for your, your comments, Ms. Flossie. Uh, I noticed there are other letters in opposition and in support of this application or any of those members of the public here to comment. <laughs> Commissioners, uh, any other yeah. questions? I would or like to comments? rebut, please. This is uh, Ryan. Uh, Kate, <laughs> Katie, help me out here. <laughs> sure. is, yeah, the, uh, the applicant wants to respond briefly to the comments and then we can return to the commission for, um, for their thoughts. Very good. Mr. Fogel, please go ahead. Yeah, just... Uh, just to rebut a little bit, um, the two-story garage is not intended to be a garage apartment as labeled on the plans. It is a studio office space. I'm an entrepreneur, self-employed architect. I own a business called Ride OKC, which does bike tours that even visit Mesta Park. I uh, speak to the history, which is very dear to me. And um, we have no intentions of turning it into an Airbnb. Um, with COVID times, I'm sure you guys understand the mental health. You really need that dedicated separate workspace. Um, to speak to the, the materials, uh, they complement the existing house, uh, consistent with other accessory buildings on the block. Um, you know, sustainability is mentioned in the guidelines. One of the best things you can do for sustainability is, you know, increase the FAR, the floor to area ratio. Uh, so that's why we went two stories. Um, I think she kind of exaggerated the, um, the views a little bit. Um, you know, privacy, I can already see uh, in her backyard from my existing second story and everyone's backyard. Uh, we are close, but I think that's the beauty of living in a, a urban neighborhood with density. You know, it's very sustainable and that's part of the draw to this area. Um, shade grass exists. Um, we set the property off further away than it was. I believe it was almost a zero lot line when it currently exists. We pulled it back about three and a half feet to, to kind of provide a little more sun. Um, you know, there are things that can be done with the design to kind of possibly, you know, reduce that even more. Uh, I do have 3D modeling uh, to show, you know, how it stacks up to neighboring buildings. The uh, abutting garage to the south of us is about 25 feet tall and ours is only 22 foot. Um, we um, could also do a sun study, a solar study if you'd like. I'd be happy to pull one together. And 
Um, that's I think all I have to say. Oh, Thank you, Mr. Fogel. Can I speak to the Portica Share? I'm sorry, I forgot that. Uh, so the Portica Share, I don't know if you guys can see that, the little pony wall there, I'm talking about the low portion that's in between the two columns. This driveway is super narrow. It's about seven foot 10 wide. So a modern day automobile can barely even pull through there. Um, Portica Shares, I mean, ideally it's a pass through, but it's also nice when you can park inside of them. And you can't do that on this one. It's a flawed design. The doors do not open which basically renders it useless. Uh, you can't get out of the car unless you go out the rear hatch, uh, which is, honestly, it's a fire hazard. Not to mention that, it forces us out onto the street where we create further congestion on 16th Street, which makes it a challenge for big vehicles like fire trucks to get in and out of our neighborhood to put out fires. So that is the reason We'd like to remove that. Uh, it's very minimally visible from the port or from the public right away, especially when we park in front of it or in the driveway. Um, I think from a life safety standpoint, it should it should be considered to be removed or lowered at least. Um, Thank you, Mr. Katie, Fogel. We, uh, we have one other person that's raised their hand uh, asking to speak. Uh, Mrs. Phelps, if she can be unmuted. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Um, and I, my husband and I live across the street on 16th Street. Um, and I have lived in the neighborhood before it was Mr. Park for about 47 years now. Um, and I so appreciated all the rules and regulations and the care that you guys take of our neighborhood and keeping it like it is our neighborhood. So I just wanna reinforce that we made those rules for a reason. And I think we ought to abide by them and not start bending them. Um, and I think if we saw the original garage, which we did through a photograph um, and I saw it as well, um, it should stay that original size. That's what it was meant to be. That's what it should be. And I hate to have little things slide like that or big things slide to change what's happening. If we do it here, where else are we gonna do it? And how else is it gonna be affected and changed? And I do appreciate all your work, you guys, so I won't say any more, thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mrs. Phelps. All right, commissioners. I, I would um, like to speak to that too, please, if I could certainly, rebut. Certainly. Um, so I, I wanna just say, I did do my due diligence before we bought this house. Uh, like I said, we've been here about a year. I uh, did peek at the Sanborn maps. I knew that a garage had existed there previously. I didn't know that historic photos were going to emerge uh, of basically a garage that was, you know, it's clearly demolished and it wasn't done by me. It was the previous owner. Um, the photos I have seen emerge of it, it looks like it was going to fall down like with a, a strong gust or maybe in a light gust. So um, I can see why they would want to tear it down. Um, if you look at the uh, last page of my attachment A, we uh, itemized the garages and their construction dates. And the, um, the last four that were constructed were within the last six years. So with those precedents, like why would I not think that this could be done? Um, there's just a lot of information that kind of led us to believe it could be done, including calling the HP office and speaking with staff that said it was likely that it could be done because precedents are there. So. Thank you, Mr. Could you Fogel. Could you repeat the page that that information is on? Um, yes, uh, let's see, I'm kind of looking for it now. Is it 16 of 33? I'm in trouble finding. Are you guys in my packet or the, the 810 page packet? Well, I was just packet. The packet. Okay. Is it the itemized list? Yes. Yeah, the itemized list. So that would be uh, page 16 of 16. Um, it's page 676. Yeah. Okay. So.
So I'm reading on, okay, so there's more. So I'm reading on here that are these, uh, these are all two story. That's so, correct. Okay, so on here it's saying that there are two in your block, 825 and 801. Commissioner Meacham, I believe that's um, on 15th though, that instead of 16th. Oh, 15th, oh, okay. And well, we're on 16th, oh, okay, I see. It's block so zero the of the Harndell edition. Yeah. That's how the county assessor does it. And that's how it was founded. So that's how I calculated it. So any of are any of the properties on 15th abutting your property? Yes. There is. Uh, it's the one in the photograph. I, I don't remember the address off the top of my head. I see but. it. Okay. Um, that was just a question. But the commission reason abutting the property, Katie, clarified was for if there was no if there was no uh, historic record of the garage right does it is it relevant across the board katie let let me read the um guideline it says when no photographic or other documentation of a previous historic garage is available a replacement garage may be two stories tall when the original or historic garage was two stories or if located in a block where two story or one and a half story garages are dominant or occur on a budding property. New garages in blocks that contain only one story garages shall be one story. Um, so we have, uh, we have typically looked to that predominant on the block that a budding property um, two-story garage, um, particularly when either the historic garage was, was long gone um, or when we had no evidence of it beyond what was in a, a Sanborn map. But I cannot tell you that we have never approved a two-story garage where we knew we were replacing a one-story garage. Right, I, I understand. I just wanted to understand, be clear on what that particular requirement meant. So question by that do you mean on the Sanborn map or when there's a photograph that exists because every garage on our block on 16th was originally a one-story garage correct um and we have i i think there's been perhaps more leeway on the two-story garage when all we had to go on was a Sanborn map and the historic garage was not documented beyond that but I, I cannot tell you that we've never approved a two-story garage when we had good photo documentation of a one-story garage that predated it um, across HP. Is a Sanborn map not considered photo documentation? Well, it's not a photograph of a garage. Um, and while we believe them to be highly accurate, we have found inaccuracies. So I'm just saying a photo, a, a one-story garage sitting there in front of us built that you're going to tear down um, carries more weight than a garage that's long gone and all we have to go on is the fact that the Sanborn map in 1922 showed a, a one-story garage. So the garage, for the record, it is gone. It is long gone. Um, I know it may have been demolished within the last three years, but it's long gone to me. Um, and it looks like it should have been long gone long before it was gone. Well, I don't, Katie, this is section 4.4.5 that you're covering, I believe. Um, I was reading 4.4.12. Okay. And, and, and that that specifically addresses if there's a photographic evidence of the historic garage, correct? Yep. The, the language in the guideline says, when no photographic or other documentation of a previous historic garage is available, a replacement garage may be two stories. Um, now, let me get back to the, um, because there is another uh, guideline that is uh, not in here that talks about when a garage may, um, sorry, I'm not finding that other piece of language. Let me look here. Uh, 
Um, so 4.4.5, construction of a replacement god, garage shall approximate the original configuration for massing style placement and detail of the former garage as described by photographic or other documentation. And then 4.4.12 goes into detail about when there is no photographic or other documentation, this is where you could construct a two-story garage. Thank you. Commissioners, any other uh, questions or comments for the applicant or for Katie? It, it looks like in that instance, we should move on to a vote. Um, I'd staff, like to do there... one last closing if possible. Okay. It, That's briefly, all. Please. This is it, I promise. Um, I know it's getting late. Just in closing, um, according to the Sam Moore maps, every two-story garage on the block, including the Heritage Hillside, was built after my house was constructed. Uh, this proves an increase in the size of the developments on my block over the course of history. So to me, it seems unfortunate to base the livelihoods of the property in the neighborhood on photographic evidence of a shed, um, which I believe uh, was what was originally there. Um, I don't know. If you choose to carefully, or if you choose to stifle these carefully planned developments, we risk the neighborhood becoming obsolete and unable to function in a modern society, which will devalue our neighborhood. That's all. Thank you for your time and uh, consideration. Thank you. Anyone else? I have one question. The, the photograph of the garage, do we know if that's the, was the original garage or if that was one that was constructed um, later in time? Um, I, well, I can speak to that and, I, and Mrs. Pulaski and Mrs. Phelps can as well, I believe. Um, They've lived in the neighborhood on this block longer than I have, but uh, th that was the original garage uh, in the 90s, and it was in approximately that condition in the, in the early 90s. Um, Mrs. Phelps or Mrs. Pulaski, if you have any other thoughts on that, please feel free to chime in. Um, I, this is uh, Mrs. Phelps, and I've been here for a long time, um, but I lived for a lot of my life on 18th Street, and I moved here about 25 years, 26 years ago, and that was the original garage then. I don't remember it ever. I know it was the original garage then, and I don't remember any construction happening while I was even on 18th Street um, as we were forming Mesta Park. Um, so I think it was there. I mean, certainly in better condition, but that was the garage that was there. And I do know that there are several homes that do have that sort of garage. My home on 18th Street did as well. Um, this is Katie. The Sanborn maps show as early as 1922, a garage in approximately that um, footprint, one story uh, and in that location. And just based on that and based on kind of the typical look of garages and the look of that structure that we see in the area, I would presume that was the historic garage. Thank you. And you know, I think that the guidelines, the way that I understand them is they don't contemplate that we build a shed back, but they contemplate that we would put a one-story garage in a block of houses with one-story garages that don't detract from the historical quality of the neighborhood, uh, which so it would be a one-story garage that would accommodate two cars um, in the way that many have been rebuilt in that, around that very block. I lived there. Uh, it's just, it would be one story uh, so that it would be compliant with um, what people expect um, from reading the guidelines. Anyone else? Staff has recommended approval of items one and items four, remove and replace a portion of the driveway with specific findings. Um, they also re recommend approval of item three, construct fence with conditions and agreed upon um, conditions and recommend continuation of the remaining items. Uh, let's 
break this up, I assume, and vote on these uh, individually. Would anyone like to make a motion on items one and four? Let me get there. Make a motion. Well, and also, just to chime in, sorry, uh, may ask the applicant if they wish to continue those other items or um, push it to a vote. Thank you. If there's a preference there. Um, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure exactly. Um, I don't <laughs> want to drag it out over the course of the next few months, honestly, but. Um, I mean, I would like to, I guess, hear some feedback first before I decide, like, can I get everyone's general thoughts before you vote? On, on, um, the pony wall issue, I don't, I mean, I'm still pretty new to the commission, um, but I definitely, um, am sympathetic to the, the challenge of trying to park there and utilize that space. I don't, does anybody on the commission have thoughts on that pony wall and the removal of that? I understand that one. And I mean, that, that one's, that one's tough, but I think that uh, maybe a, I mean, I'm not really, uh, Ryan suggested lowering it or something. Maybe, uh, I don't know, is there any way that, you know, there could be some remaining a foot on each side does that help so you could open the door or uh, I, I, I understand that it seems like you're almost trapped and right now that's there's no garage so that's the only covered parking I, I hate to take a piece of that away but it, it, it does seem like uh, for today and cars that it doesn't make any sense to have a portico share that you can't park in because you can't get out of the car my thought on that one. Yeah, I agree. It just seems dangerous, like you said, you know. Uh, the applicant has the ability to provide any documentation that they choose to that illustrates whether or not that's part of the historic structure as well. Well, I mean, I totally agree. It's part of the historic structure. Yeah. I don't think that there's any doubt there. I'm just saying that <laughs> this is just one of those unique circumstances where we've trapped somebody in their car and they can't get out. And so I, I don't really, uh, it's something that could be put back at a later date. It's not, uh, but it, it just seems, it just seems silly to have that be in the way of getting in and out of a car when you know you have a covered parking space and you have so little room on the street and even between the sidewalk and the house so uh anyway that would be uh i i wouldn't be opposed to that in that i do believe in this instance there is a unique circumstance so that's my thought on the pony wall yeah, it's limited from the street that I think the feature of the pony wall um, and then also being 16th street, I can um, understand the desire to not park on the street if you can help it um, and utilize the drive and the portica share um, for parking instead. So I, I would just, go ahead. I, I just scrolled through the um, members of the public who are present and I see that two people have waved their hand so if there's any ability to unmute them at some point and let them have their say that would be appreciated after after commissioner poor finishes of course um, i was just going to say i'd be willing to advance that the item so rita um correct me if i'm wrong but i think what we typically do is um make a motion and a second and then open for any final discussion we do that but if there are citizens that wanted to be heard before the deliberations began that would be appropriate okay okay we have two additional members of the public 
uh, Mrs. Pulofsky and Mrs. Phelps. Mrs. Are, Pulofsky? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, the, the two-story garages that uh, Mr. Fogel is referring to were, were not original structures. And some of the guidelines that have been referenced make it clear that that's, those, those sections of the guidelines are only relevant because there's no photographic documentation. When there is photographic documentation, which we have, the guidelines are clear about what needs to be done. And we're not asking anybody to build a shed back or build, you know, you're building a garage that would be a two, two car functional garage uh, that could accommodate two vehicles comfortably, but that would maintain the characteristics and the look and the integrity of the original design, which has a shed roof. Uh, it has a slope, it's easy to maintain. I have one, Mine was my garage was in a very similar condition to the one that was described earlier today where we had to prop it up and pour us a new slab and we had so much damage and, and we managed to, to make it very charming. It's, you know, it's one of the few remaining original garages in its original state that is in Mesta Park. And, you know, to, to say that a two-story garage abuts this property, uh, that's Heritage Hills. Heritage Hills and Mesta Park have two totally distinctly different characters. You know, the properties in behind us in Heritage Hills are at least 60 feet apart. You know, our properties are 15 feet apart. I don't think there's any way to, to say that those abutting properties would justify building a two-story garage in Mesta Park. You know, it's, it's just especially when you know what the condition of the original structure was, and we do in this case, you know. So I would just urge you to follow the guidelines. The relevant guideline here is, is 4.4.5 when photographic documentation exists. Um, Mrs. Phelps has also raised her hand. Yeah, I, I, I was just going to speak to the pony wall, and I do know I've got good friends over on 17th Street that deal with the same sort of thing, and it is a problem. They have to, they can't get out. In fact, uh, their cars are as big as um, all of our cars are now, um, but I, I, I didn't know, you know, I think there should be some way to figure that out so you could open a door, but they have to use it just as they have to climb out if they want to use it as protection from a hailstorm or something. But they do have a garage. So maybe, as you say, there's a temporary solution to this or that it can be taken down while there's no garage or, you know, uh, maybe uh, altered somehow. Um, but I do think that that is, is a problem. But I know it's also in, in the neighborhood. So are we going to stick by our rules or are we going to change them? And I think that's up to you guys. Thank you, Mrs. Phelps. Mr. Fogel? Yeah, just to follow up um, on some of that, I guess the uh, Portica share, you know, a lot of the ones in the neighborhood have that little wall either removed or completely gone. Um, it's not very visible from the public right of way. I don't think it's really a defining characteristic. You'll still have like the volume of the portico share there and its function intact. Um, I think we'd be willing to lower it and or like Joe said, open up the garage or make it, take a piece out where you can open a door just for life safety reasons. Um, and to follow up on the garage, I think just to wrap it up, um, one of the, uh, oppositions keeps uh, mentioning a shed roof. Uh, the garage to my west was recently replaced. It began construction, I think, a, about a week after we, we arrived here. And uh, I think it was basically the same design as uh, the one that is in the packet. They didn't go back with the pitched roof. So um, 
they didn't go back with a shed roof. I'm sorry. They went with more of a, a gabled roof. Um, it's not very equal in volume, I suppose, to what it was. I mean, the commission's not open to a two-story garage. Would you be open to a one-and-a-half-story garage or at least a pitch roof? Brian, on that note, would you like to continue until? I would, but I, I don't want to spin my wheels designing, redesigning a garage if it's not even a possibility, I guess. So I just I kind of like to gauge you guys. I mean, I, I would say it's just, it's kind of an unfortunate situation because we always believe, believe me or not, the commissioners want to do want to let most people do what they want to. And we sit here trying to figure out how we can make that happen or mitigate it to a certain degree that at least, you know, you're, you're somewhat happy. I, yeah. I'm, I'm in agreement, I mean, with the staff's um, conclusion about, the, uh, about not a two-story. I, I agree that, that comparing the Heritage Hills with the Mesta Park development there is a little different. And uh, we've had this situation come up where, yes, there were some within distance and this, and we have said no. And I would tell you, it's really kind of one of the hardest ones, but it's also an important one. So I would have to say, I would like to see a, a different proposal. I do, I do not believe that we have made people, uh, and I think Katie quoted it, uh, it has to be you know, somewhat like the original and, and accommodate two cars. So, I mean, it, in my opinion, we have, or my, in my memory, we've approved things that don't necessarily look like the original garage as long as they're compatible with the house. So, you know, you might want to come back with maybe option A and option B in regards to the one story or the one and a half story or something, but okay. it, that, that would be my thought. Okay. Yeah. I think I'd vote for the continuance on the garage and then you can vote on everything else. If that's okay. Um, okay. Question. Do, would, would the applicant like a continuance on the pony wall to consider any alternatives to its removal or I don't know, the commission may have been moving in the direction of allowing the, the complete removal of that feature. I'd, I'd go ahead and attach that so you could provide a drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we'd need a drawing in any, in any event. So, uh, Mr. Fogel, um, if if you wanted a continuance to next month, I believe that you'd have to have your submissions in. Katie, is it next Tuesday? Yes, it would be Tuesday of next week. Uh, otherwise, um, a c continuance to June second might buy buy you some time to do the the revisions you need. What would you prefer? So you can Tuesday the 13th? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think I can make that. I'd rather not skip a month. Okay. Well, let, let's let's take the, the um, item two, construct garage first. Would someone prepare to make a motion? I would make a motion to continue item two of HPCA 21-00046 to the uh, I'm sorry, Katie, the, what is it, uh, May? May 5th. May 5th meeting. Is there a second? Commissioner Port will second that motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, please vote. I don't have a voting window yet, okay. I apologize. The uh, time go was, was spinning quite a bit, so it just popped up. So who made who makes the motion? Joe Meacham made the motion. And who seconds? Commissioner four seconds. Okay. We'll just open the vote. All those in favor, please vote. Katie, can I amend my motion? I should have included uh, uh, item five with the continuance. 
So that will need to be a separate motion now that there's been a vote. Okay. On oh, it. Yeah. We can just do a separate motion to continue item five. Okay. Yeah. I make a motion to continue number five. Same case. Excuse me, madam. <laughs> Is, I need to see if uh, Commissioner Schultz wanted to vote on this last. Yes, I don't have the box. You you vote aye. Yes. Can, can, excuse me, Commissioner Reacham, you were starting uh, to make a second motion. Second motion, continue. same same uh, same case, but we need to also continue item five of the pony wall so he can uh, uh, bring in a, a drawing of the proposed change. Commissioner Poor will second. Thank you. All in favor or opposed, please vote. Excuse me, um, one second, please. Who, who made the second on that last motion, please? The second was Poor. Mr. Poor. Let's open the vote. Commissioner Borzone. Okay. Uh, David Ramey. Seems like there's, there's one commissioner that has not voted. I'm trying to figure out who it was. Uh, I'm still showing a waiting box. This is Commissioner Ramey. I uh, vote yay. Okay. I think that's it. I'm closing the vote. All right, so that leaves us with items one, three, and four. Does anyone care to make a motion on the remaining items? I would make a motion to approve items one and four and items three with the specific findings and conditions as noted in the Staff report for HBCA 2100046. Would anyone care to second? Commissioner Moore will second. All in favor or opposed, please vote. Before I think it's close vote. Yeah, it's time to go. I believe that covers all the items on HPCA 21 0046. Mr. Fogel, thank you. Thank you, Commission and staff. All right, um, moving on. Other business, Katie? So uh, this is Katie. You all will be happy to know that this application has been withdrawn. Um, so uh, they're able to proceed with uh, uh, home sharing because they're in an HL overlay, not an HP district, and they're only doing a home share within their place of uh, residence. So we do not have any action to take on this case. We can move on to communications and reports. Excellent. You have <laughs> communications and reports. Yes. So uh, lots of administrative approvals. Um, staff is always happy to respond to any questions about those, and they are available online if you ever want to look at those applications and what's getting approved. Um, several withdrawals listed as well. These are typically um, applications that just never made it to the point of the commission reviewing um, the case. They were incomplete or the applicant uh, change their scope of work. So those are items that were withdrawn. And again, we can always um, provide additional information on those if you're curious. Um, no administrative closings or items to report from City Council, Board of Adjustment, um, or Planning Commission. Um, that takes us to Municipal Councilor. If Rita has anything to comment upon. I have no comment. Thank you. Um, and then next meeting date is Wednesday, May 5th. Uh, with new applications to have been received uh, April 6th, yesterday, 
and any information from this meeting would be um, due to staff by Tuesday of next week, April 13th. Um, on our workshop schedule that is posted with the city clerk annually, we have a workshop scheduled for Wednesday, June 9th, but we have already uh, also asked you all to hold the date of April, uh, let me look at it just to double check, April 28th uh, for a workshop that we'll be holding virtually and we will get you an agenda um, for that out soon. Yes, that's Wednesday, April 28th. And we are going to have um, our colleagues from the Sus Office of Sustainability uh, here at the city to talk with you all for a portion of that meeting about um, things like solar panels, um, as was discussed at the previous commission meeting. Um, so that is all I have on there. It takes us to items from commissioners. Are there any commissioners who have any items for discussion? Thankfully not moving on. Are there any citizens to be heard? Uh, hearing none, I believe we stand adjourned. Great Thank job, you very Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for your time today. I really appreciate it. I